Okay, we got that going. Hello, Cotton Prince. How you doing, my man? What's up? Uh, new game? Let's go. Have you ever seen this game before? Hello, Shade. Welcome. Doing good, my man. Excited to play some Star Sector. It seems this music is still a little bit too loud. Let's bring it down to 25%. I kind of want to have this as as background. Yeah, let's go 20%. That should be fine. You guys let me know if uh, it's too loud or not. Uh, no. New game. And let's go. Hello, Painball. Uh, this is Star Sector. It is considered to be Mountain Blade in space. Hello, Emil. Yes, I'm currently utilizing Nemo's, uh, uh, Nemo's mod list. It was simply a very good balance of not going overboard with mods and also adding a lot of content to the game. Uh, so yeah. The idea is, for those who don't know, uh, Star Sector is a video game where you are the captain of a ship slash fleet. Uh, you roam the galaxy in search of work and profit. Uh, usually you're going to be either joining a faction and help them be super powerful, or you create your own faction. Uh, you've ascended to be on balance and stack too many mods. Okay, Emil, that is your choice, mate. Also, welcome to the inn. Um, you can choose to be a bounty hunter, a merchant, a mercenary, uh, what else? An explorer. It's a very good game, and it's very in-depth. Very, very in-depth game. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to go with an average sector age with normal size. Uh, it's going to be on Iron... We'll see if we're going to go Iron Man mode. We'll see. Because I'm not very good at this game, I'm still learning this game. And it's a very fucking complex game. Once you get the hang of it, it's fine, but... Okay, uh, so we got a lot of portraits to choose from. Uh, I also added a mod that adds m more more um, lore-friendly portraits to the mix. So yeah, there's a lot to pick from. Uh, but I think I'm just going to go with my fave. If I can, she's pretty. Um, if I can find him, I think it's he's a little bit ah. This guy, this is my favorite, my favorite avatar for right now. Looking good. All right, let's generate a name. If you guys have an idea for a name for our captain, go for it. But I think we're gonna be bringing the Fiddlebottom Clan to the galaxy. My my wife is rolling her head where her eyes right now. Butch. All right. It is Butch Fiddlebottom, the classic. The goddamn classic. Alright, so let's go in. Um, I guess... Random seed... Um... That's fine. Let's go in. Uh, this is a presentation to the Nexerlian mod. I uh, think of Nexerlian as a... Floris mod. It's it's similar to Flo what Floris does for Warband. Nexerlin does for Star Sector what Floris does for Warband. No, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go in next. Uh, proceed. There's a lot of factions to choose from, but we're not going to choose any of them. We're going to go for a free start. And uh, we have a few fleets to choose from. A few styles to choose from as well. Um, there's a lot of ships in this game. A lot of effing ships. And I'm going to try to explain each one of them and some of the mechanics, how they work. Uh, but it's just going to be kind of a general explanation. Okay, so for Solo Frigate, we can go for the Alastor. As in, you literally start with one ship. Uh, with a Centurion or with a Groundhog. Um, out of the three, the Centurion is my favorite. It simply has the most staying power. Uh, for combat, small, you get a Vagrant, a Junker, and a Wren. That Junker's horrible, so then recommend it. The Vagrant's kind of good. Or a Hammerhead Vigilance Kite. Uh, the village is shit, but the Hammerhead and Kites are there to stay. Very, very powerful midline ships. Also, the Hammerhead, if you guys play the game, there are Hammerheads everywhere. It's one of... It's, it's practically the starter ship for everyone. Uh, for combat, large... 
Can't be just in the Junker like that. Does the Junker have shields, Emil? Okay. I rest my case. Uh, Gemini Spectacle Red Arrow. Okay. For a trade fleet. A Mule Cerberus Mercury. I kind of don't like either of the options. But where to choose, I would still go for the Mule, maybe. Uh, trade large, carrier small, carrier large, explorer, explorer large, super ship, or you could just start off with the Grand Fleet if you don't want to go for it. Well, I'm not a real man then. That's fine. If, if real men don't need shields, then I'm not a real man. Also, you guys don't, I don't think you guys can see the chat. Give me one sec. Let me bring it up. There, this needs to be on the top. Hopefully now it's going to be working. You guys are going to be able to see it. Uh, so yeah, I think we're either going to go with a small combat or a solo frigate. Uh, do, do you guys want me to just start it from the goddamn ground with nothing in my pocket? Want to go with that? Want to just start with a poor son of a bitch? Because I'm down with starting as a poor son of a bitch. Starting from nothing sounds interesting. Okay. Okay. We're going to struggle a bit, but it should be fun. It should be fun. It's a good learning opportunity? Of course. Okay. Um, now we're practically, we acquire this ship, the Centurion class heavy custom frigate. We are going to modify it once we get into the game. Um, you love this. You love you some struggle. Okay, dude. Okay. Sounds good. We gain some crew, gain some supplies, heavy machinery, and 20 fuel. Practically nothing. But to run this ship, you need practically nothing. We're going to start with a level 1 uh, character and with 20 credits. Oh, of course. Of course, I mean. How could we put the prince in a struggling situation? Okay, so um, this is the character screen. Uh, you're going to be having combat, leadership, technology, and industry. What I'd recommend for you guys is to go for things that affect the entire fleet. Uh, just grab stuff uh, with a name like Butch Philbottom. You already have any. Uh, you already have anything to conquer the galaxy. Oh, everything to conquer the galaxy. Fuck yeah, I do. Uh, but yeah, I recommend that you grab stuff that affects the entire fleet. You you kind of want to be your paladin. You got to go for a paladin build. We're also going to be going heavily into industry because we do want to dabble into colony management, and we do want some. Well lesser, more efficient consumption and salvage. But for right now, what I would say is a priority, and most of people agree, is to go into the technology and grab navigation, because that's going to give us a powerful ability at level 3, which is the transverse jump ability. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain when we get into the game. For right now, we're going to go one point into there, and two points into here. Now, um, let me show you something real quick. Let's reset. If I put a point into technology, I can go into all the technology perks up to level 1. If I have 2 points, I can go up to level 2. If I have 3 points, I can go all the way up to level 3. And that applies the same to the rest. I, I gotta say, combat is not that useful for your character. It's combat and half of the leadership tree will come in hand for your lieutenants, for your companions. Uh, what I usually go for is tech, industry, and leadership. In that order, practically, in that order. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to go two points in technology and one point in navigation. Combat can work if you rely heavily on your own ship. We are going to rely heavily on... We are going to rely on our own ship, but we don't really need the combat perks to make it work. If we're careful, if we don't go out of position, we should be fine. We should be fine. The plan would be to go with navigation, and I think I'm going to grab gunnery implants. I really like gunnery implants for my own ship. So we're practically going to be working on that. And then uh, at least a point in electronic warfare and all of the points in loadout design, simply because with loadout design you're going to be able to equip more stuff on your ships as you go through the game. Um, 
probably navigation and gunnery implants and then go into industry and then we return to technology and get these two uh, afterwards we're just going to go into leadership probably for fleet logistics coordinated maneuvers um probably going to start in the late game i'm going to be getting officer management and let's see which one is it was it fighter doctrine i think Okay, yeah, we're gonna get Fighter Doctrine and probably gonna go into Planetary Operations because it's simply gonna help us in the late game with our colony. Uh, but until we get there, it's it's gonna be a long time, so let's just start the game. Let's, let's stop the waiting. So, currently, uh, it's a randomly generated universe. There are core worlds that always spawn in the same location, uh, but the systems that are unexplored will be randomly generated. There are quests, there are faction-related quests, there are randomly generated quests, bounties, procurement contracts, transport contracts, a lot of stuff. I know that Next can randomize the course too. I don't want to randomize the course, to be honest. I kind of like them slightly on the tighter, compact side. There we go. So, we're in the game. We're in the game. On the left side, you're going to be practically seeing the reports. Uh, currently, there's a system bounty in Canis. I'm practically going to have to explain all of this stuff. Let's try to go from the macro to the micro. Yeah, let's go with that. So, this is the universe. Each universe, the in the universe, there are constellations. These. Each constellation contains star systems. Each star system contains multiple planets that can that can either be colonized or have space stations around them. That would be the idea. You have two screens, two world maps, let's say. A star star system screen. Currently, we are in the star system of Corvus near Jengala. And then you're going you're gonna to be in the hyperspace lanes um, on the world map-ish where you're going to be traveling between star systems. To travel within a star system, as in from one planet to another, uh, you do not, in the same star system, you do not require fuel. This is your fuel over here, um, which is going to increase based on the amount of ships that you're going to have. And when you're in, in the hyperspace, when you're traveling between star systems, that's when you're going to be consuming fuel. You're also going to be having a few abilities, but we're going to be reading through them as well um, a little bit later. You're going to be finding all types of star systems. Uh, usually, you're going to have to find bounties in unexplored star systems. So you're going to be have to re be reading the, on them, but it's pretty cool. In a star system, you will most likely find planets that can be colonized or uncolonized. These colonized planets can either be military or civilian. Practically, if they're civilian, they're going to have more goods, but less weapons. If they're military, they're going to have more weapons and less goods. Uh, besides that, let's see, you're also going to be having stations. Uh, stations uh, act as planets, and they represent different factions of the world. In a system, there can be multiple factions, multiple planets, and multiple stations with of different factions. And you're also going to be finding random doodads a lot that provide extra bonuses for the factions who have control of them. For example, this makeshift sensor array practically provides all ships with increased line of sight, which plays a very important role within the game. Okay, uh, that is pretty much it. Um, let's just start going into the micro now. We're going to go into Jingala and check out what's going on. So when you're in the when you're in a city or in a station in this case uh you're going to be able to do the same kind of the same stuff that you can do in mountain blade uh you can go to the comms directory which is practically the um lord's hall uh currently we don't really care to talk with these guys we can go to the tavern uh, which can provide us with different types of course you have your flavor text but i'm not really going to go through the flavor text unless it's something interesting unless it's a unique quest i'm going to be reading each quest which i'll do for the first time once and then uh, we're never going to be reading them again. Yeah, I know it's sad, but what you're going to do? You can reappear your ships at the dockyard, which I'm going to be explaining a little bit later. 
Uh, you can trade higher crew, a lot of stuff, which I'm going to be explaining a little bit later. Uh, you can consider your military options. You can engage with a station in battle. You can launch a raid, which, to be honest, I haven't really explored these options yet. I haven't really reached that late in the game. And they have some special functions, um, like inviting the hegemony to for form an alliance, which is going to come in handy when you're going to be re representing a faction or have your own faction. Um, you can also check faction directory, which is going to give you information on different factions. You can request a fleet, which I think is a sheet or console command. I'm not exactly sure. I never used that. Probably going to use it at some point. And you can also take temporary control of autonomous co colonies. Again, kind of a console command in case something goes bad and you want to fix it. That would be the idea. You're also going to be getting prisoners, which you can sell at a... You hire a fleet to attack something. Do you actually pay money for that fleet, Aronator? Also, welcome to the end, man. Haven't seen you in a while. Defense fleets. Okay, I see. Okay, so it's not for free. It's not for free. I, I'm okay with that. Good to know. Good to know when I'm going to be uh, doing it or using it. You pay initial cost depending on the cost of the fleet. Cool, perfect. Uh, for prisoners, you're going to be finding sometimes some high target VIPs, which you can either sell or simply receive a reputation boost. I usually like to stack them. Uh, what are they called? Uh, rep bombs? I think they're called rep bombs. Okay, let's go into the trade screen. And over here, oh wow, there's a lot to explain. Uh, for starters, you're going to be having your basic necessities for your fleet which are supplies, which are literally used to maintain your fleet into a combat-ready state and practically repair everything on the ships. Fuel, which is useful to travel from system to system. Crew, which is essential to maintain um, your ships running. Um, and that's practically the essentials. Then you're going to be having marines, which are useful for invasions. Heavy machinery, which is used for scavenging and exploring. And then you have literally trade goods. Also, um, all of these supplies and fuels and crew and stuff can also be used as trade goods, which is cool. And then afterwards, you're going to be coming to the weapons, which are arranged from biggest to smallest, I think. Or are they arranged in a... No, I don't think... I don't know how they're arranged, to be honest. Sometimes it's to smallest, sometimes it's to biggest. Maybe it's arranged based on ordinance, ordinance points, which practically is the cost of... No, no, that's a three ordinance. Hmm. Practically, big guns at the beginning, smaller guns, defensive guns at the end. And then further at the end, you have fighter wings that you can equip into carriers, and then blueprints that you can use for extra abilities and adding mods to your ship which we gotta go and check out. Uh, besides that, there's the open market, there's the black market, which simply has a lot more bigger, badder, dangerous stuff. And then there's the hegemony military, which is gonna become accessible if you join the said faction. This Jingala jungle world is controlled by the hegemony in this case, which we are not allied with. Uh, just a quick look, if, to see if we have anything interesting. It's not like I'm gonna be able to equip my ship with uh, but let's see, a Mark 9 auto cannon. I seem to recall that that's quite slow. Manicor cannon is super slow, but has a good... Yeah, that's clean. The range is not that good either. What would be good in this section on the open market? Not much. Maybe light machine guns for some point defense, but besides that... Ah, there we go. The auto pulse laser, one of the best choices for large weapons. Uh, lightning gun is a little bit high on the flux cost, and it doesn't do shit against shields, so it's not that good. Uh, medium combat laser, can it be good as a replacement? We'll see. We'll see what we're going to be using from here. Uh, what's the hegemony producing? Oh, yeah. This is to see more information on the colony and what it produces. You go into the colony screen over here in the detrade. And over here, you'll see all of the commodities that are being imported and exported. Practically, a green arrow, it's export. A red arrow, they need it. They want it. These guys. Oh, and also the green parts are the excess, uh, excess goods that have currently been produced in the colony. And you can buy them at a lower price. Landing gun is such a disappointment overall. 
I guess the lightning gun is very, very deadly if you can make the enemy overload. It, I guess it's a good finisher weapon, but I wouldn't put it on auto fire, which we're going to be discussing later. Also, we're going to talk a lot more about the screen once we create our own fact, once we create our own faction with our own colony. So, uh, let's just take these tabs to the bottom left. It's kind of a mini tutorial episode, just to get you guys familiar with what's going on for those who have no idea of Star Sector. Uh, in the character screen, we kind of talked a little bit over it. Uh, you're going to be gaining experience from everything. Scavenging, discovering shit, uh, gaining a profit from trading, killing stuff, bounties. You're going to be gaining profit even if you fart in the general direction of someone. So don't worry about leveling up. Don't worry about, oh no, to level up I got to focus on fighting. No, you can literally be a truck driver bringing bringing a profit to yourself through simple trade and you're going to be just fine and dandy uh the only thing is i don't think you gain experience from contracts from quests but i'll i'll have to verify that i'll have to verify that i think you just gain money but again i'll, I'll do a first quest and uh answer that right off the bat uh then we got the fleet screen over here in the fleet screen, you're going to be seeing all of your ships. And this is also the screen where you're going to be buying ships. Um, first tab is your fleet, and you also have the option to sell. On the second tab, you're going to be seeing everything that you can buy. And since it's heavily modded, you're going to be seeing a lot of types of ships of various sizes. Uh, speaking of various sizes, if I recall correctly, we got frigates, which is this one. This is a frigate, one of the smallest ships. Uh, we got destroyers, which is a sec, which is above frigates. We got cruisers, which is above destroyers, and then we have capital ships, which are the big boys, the big dogs, which are have a very very high cost. Mm, true, I'm not seeing, but I think it's just because it's hegemony, Emil. I think if I go in the black market, we're gonna be seeing some other stuff. Let's see, the dragon, the scola. Really? No, no ships from different factions? That's lame. Hey, Pyro Eagle, welcome to the end. Got some pirate design ships, which are shit. Just, I don't know, I, I really don't like pirate designs. But I guess we're going to be seeing uh, other ships out there. Uh, do I want anything that Brawler would be good, but it's demodded? Okay, um, yeah, that's also another thing that I need to talk about. Um, when you buy ships, it, it goes in the same categories like the open market. Sorry, like the marketplace. There's the open market, which you're going to be paying a tariff for. Um, there's the black market, which you're not going to be paying a tariff for. Hopefully I explained that. Um, what's the difference between buying on the open market and buying on the black market? And then the hegemony military, which you're going to be gaining access if you're friendly with the hegemony. If you're part of their military, you simply have a high reputation with them. Uh, yeah, real quick, in case I forgot, what's the difference between open market hegemony and marketplace? Let's buy one supply. Um, on the open market, you're always going to be paying a tariff to the government. Uh, in this case, it's an 80% tariff from the, from the total of a item on the black market you're not paying you're not paying that tariff so it's cheaper but if you open if you buy too much from the black market the authorities will become suspicious with you and if they catch you you're going to be receiving a um reputation hit with the faction overall and if you have illegal goods like drugs or harvested organs they're they're even gonna confiscate your shit. They're just gonna take your stuff. Commission is mandatory if you want anything bigger than a frigate. I mean, if you're going on an independent world and you find a bazaar or something like that, you can grab some bigger ships. You can also simply find ships, derelict ships. Um, usually, uh, if you buy a lot from the open market, you can get away with buying some stuff from the black market. The suspicion level will not rise. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, practically with the military market, heavy grade military shit brothers. If you want the big guns, 
it's in there. Also, you're mostly going to find faction-specific weapons in there, so keep that in mind. Hey, Goon Kid, welcome back to the end. Uh, bum, 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 let's see. We can also storage stuff, but I don't recommend doing it because you're going to be paying for the stuff on a monthly basis. Um, recommend finding an abandoned station and just keeping your stash there for a while. I'm not really seeing good stuff here, but we'll look at the fleet screen. Okay, uh, for right now, I don't think I want to buy... Yo, yes, let's talk about D-Mods. So, um, you see these three lines next to the ships? That means they have a D-Mod. They have a defect. They have this, There's something rock with the ship, so that means you're going to be finding it at a smaller or cheaper price in this case to check what's the problem with this also you're going to be able to tell that it's demodded by seeing a d in the in parenthesis on all of the ships for example uh this nebula civilian transport is not demodded so it's at 29 uh the nebula this one is demodded so it's a little bit cheaper it's just at 22k uh let's see what does this have this has a degraded engine because it has a degraded engine Oh yeah, this this is this screen practically shows you all of the stats on the ship. Where's the goddamn soul? There's a lot of stuff here. A flavor description. This might also indicate what's the role of the ship, but I'm gonna show you a better better um, way of figuring out what's the role of a ship in the refit screen. Also over here, you're gonna be seeing the full list of all of the ships in the game. Holy shit! Yeah, good luck with that. I actually went ahead and read through the entire goddamn codex just to see what's in there, just to get an idea of what I'm what I'm going to be facing, what I'm going to be finding. Okay, so because of the degraded engines, it will have minus one to maximum burn, and um, top speed is going to be fucked up. Uh, and because it's a civilian grade hull, its sensor profile will be higher, its sensor strength will be lower. I'll explain these. Actually, I'm going to explain them right now. Uh, sensor profile is how far um, you'll be sighted by other ships. So the higher the sensor profile, um, the farther you'll be seen by others. Which is not a good thing if you want to sneak in a system and smuggle some shit. Or simply sneak by pirates. And then the sensor strength is how far your ship can see. So literally... Practically, this Nebula, Nebula ship is blind. Uh, the maximum burn speed um, refers to the speed of the ship in hyperspace and in solar systems. Uh, fuel capacity is literally how much fuel it can carry. Um, also, because it has a degraded, because it has a demod, uh, the recovery cost is lower. So, in case the ship gets destroyed in battle. Um, there's a chance for you to be able to recover that ship back. You know, it just gets disabled in battle instead of getting fully destroyed. And you can just, it's cheaper to recover it from said battle. Sometimes it can be useful. Sometimes you're going to be finding demons that simply don't affect your ship. You don't really care of that aspect. For example, um, a ship that has two big guns and has a demod for defective point defense weapons which are small which only affects usually small weapons if you have two big guns you're mostly going to want to have the big ones it also applies to combat uh, combat readiness which i'm going to be explaining in a sec uh okay cool i didn't know that that's awesome that's awesome uh top speed refers to in battle speed which most of the times is important nebula the nebula class custom civilian transport though is not a combat ship you'll mostly use this you're going to be mostly putting defensive weapons on it and just use it as a support ship which are again the different types of ships that we're going to be discussing about Okay, uh, yeah, let's check that brawler. So this brawler has impaired life support systems, which decreases the amount of crew that you can have on the ship. Um, so practically, you can never... If you just have this ship, you, you'll never be able to fully man it properly. Faulty power grid, which uh, is costly on the flux system, and performance singularities, that means it cannot stay in combat for too long. Which is, again, is pretty shit. I'm not going to be buying that shit. Thank you very much. Uh, what do we got here? A Brawler MK2 fighter tender. I think that's the pirate version. 
yeah design type pirates uh there are multiple um there are multiple ships of the same type like a brawler but they've been designed by different factions and each faction has added its own flavor or its own insanity to the mix this is a pirate design and it gives up on its medium ballistic slots uh for a fighter bay why the fuck would you do that i have no idea it sounds horrible i could grab the vigilance frigate but i feel like they're very weak the tritachian brawler is a straight downgrade i'll have to look it up i'll have if i find one we'll check it out um what does the what does the tritachian brawler do does it give you energy weapon slots Okay, um, I could buy a Vigilance, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't have small sl small weapon slots for defense. I feel like Vigilances are slow and vulnerable most of the times. Uh, let's see, a Scrapper, no. I'm, I'm going to be looking for Shepherds, to be honest. Really like the Shepherds. Trace the Ballistics for Energies, but gains no Flux stats. Oh, god damn, that's bad. That's very bad. Speaking of flux stats, let's go and uh, go to the refit screen. So over here in this screen, you're going to be modifying your ships. All of your ships uh, from scratch. You're going to be receiving a... Sometimes you're going to be receiving some inbuilt weapons or present weapons when you buy them or when you find the ship. Uh, but if you buy them from the shop, the weapons will be stripped like so you're going to be having to add all of them manually now whew, this is going to be a big subject what do you need to think about when you equip a ship oh my god i'm my face is covering the the ship stats god damn it there's a lot of going on there's a lot going on in the what's a good place to put my face in let's try here yeah this should be fun hopefully we'll see We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Now as we go through the game. Hopefully I'm not going to be covering any important... We'll see. Um, so, what do you need to think about? This is how combat will work. And we can also test up our designs to show you combat as well. Uh, testing is, simulations are practically for free. You can test a ship as much as you like. I spend fucking hours inside simulations just to get the best bang for my buck. Okay, so, um, let's strip it, first of all, just to explain what's going on. So, each ship has ordinance points. Based on its ordinance points, that's the amount of shit that you can equip on a ship. Amount of stuff that you could equip. Everything that you put on a ship is costs ordinance. There are very few exceptions, like inbuilt weapons or inbuilt fighter wings... For example, I think the Shepard drone carrier has an inbuilt mining wing uh, that's free of cost. It's in there, uh, but I don't think you can replace it either. Well, I'll have to check that. I'll really have to check that. But I think it's inbuilt and I don't think you can re replace it. Uh, you're going to be seeing your top speed here, your armor, your hull, and your flux capacity. Okay, now, um, this is how you fight. This is how you destroy a ship in the game. You first need to go through its shields. Then you got to go through its armor. Once you go through its armor, you reach the hull. Once you destroy the hull, the ship gets destroyed. That would be the idea. It's going to be easier shown if I show you in battle. I'm just going to run a simulation real quick. I'm going to be adding a live targeting dummy. Okay, let's see. Uh, Swarmer missile that cannot stay on auto fire. That can stay on auto fire. Let's go. I'm probably going to lose this battle because I'm fighting against a lasher. But this would be the idea. I just want that ship to come in range. And there we go. Now I'm going to be explaining to you guys a little bit on the um, combat screen. So practically, we're in fucking space. Um, this is our ship. That's the enemy ship. Currently, we have a target. You can target a ship by pressing the R key. I like it targeted. Um, also, if you target a ship, your weapons will tend to prioritize 
attacking that ship, especially missiles, if they're on auto fire, or simply if you aim a auto guiding missile, it will go towards your target. Keep that in mind. A combat radar over here. Um, a lot of information. This, it's 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 a very intimidating game. It's it took me quite a while to get the courage to just read up, sit back, and learn the goddamn game. Uh, let's look a little bit of our ship and our stats. So over here, you'll see some information on the ship. Over here, you'll see all of the information on the ship. Just just start it from small, and then we're gonna go up. The hull is your um, health. That's the health of the whole ship. Surrounding your hull, we have armor. Over here, you're going to be able to see the distribution of all the armor. As your armor goes down, this will be grayed out. So, for example, if this ship shoots me on this side, only on this side, the armor will go away. So I, I could technically still fight if I turn the other cheek, if I turn... Uh, this side towards the enemy ship. Right clicking will activate your shields. Um, some ships have shields, uh, some ships don't. The ships that don't have shields usually have more armor. I recommend it against using armored ships, uh, but some of them work. I just don't like them because they suck, but some of them work. Okay, above the hull, uh, you have your flux. Your flux is used to shoot your guns and to maintain your shield. A shield will passively produce flux. Ballistics will use flux. Energy weapons you will use a lot of flux, most of them. Again, it will be it will depend on a gun to gun basis, on a weapon to weapon basis. Uh, missiles don't usually use flux only when you fire them. Some of them don't use flux at all, which is awesome, which is cool. Um, if you max out your flux bar, you're gonna ship is, your ship is going to overload. If it overloads, all of your weapon systems will deactivate, but you can still steer the ship. You can still use the engines. Okay, um, if you're going up into flux, Usually it's a good idea to stop your shield right before you hit flux capacity, flux limit, and even stop your weapons, or just keep your weapons firing. Your weapons will never shoot when they know that they're going to go over flux. That's a thing. That's unless, unless you shoot it manually. For example, if I decide to take those assault guns and keep on firing like a schnitzel puff, I will overload. But if the AI shoots it, you know, if it's set on auto-fire mode, uh, then the AI will never overload your ship. They will, they will always maintain at the max maximum amount of flux. Um, now, there are two ways to get rid of flux. Literally not be... In, no, actually, three ways. Sorry about that. Uh, passively venting, which you do at all times. When you don't have your shields activated and when you're not shooting, you passively vent flux. Um, when you manually vent, which was the V key, does this game have a RTS and grand strategy? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But it's not turn-based. You can always pause the battle whenever you want. You can stay in pause mode to think about it as much as you want. Um, but I'm going to talk about this panel in a sec. You literally access that panel by pressing tab. Hello, this best noob. Welcome back to the end, dude. Playing the new Valorant has made it when you go to space. Uh, just for today. Just for today. Having fun with this game. Uh, and if you guys like it, we're going to further play Star Sector. It's, it's an awesome game. Okay, um, I was talking about venting. Yes, about getting rid of flux. You have manual venting, which is the V key, but that deactivates your weapons. So practically, it's a self-imposed overload. Let's go with that. And you're going to be in that self-imposed overload until all of the flux goes away. Um, and then the third option, the third way to get rid of flux is to get a mod called System uh, Safety Overrides, which simply increase your passive venting by a large amount. Yes, yes, that's also a good point. Um, venting is always shorter than actual overload. Overload, um, you get overloaded based on the amount of damage that you received 
um, in the shield when it overloaded. Yeah, true. Yeah, it doesn't fuck your engines up. You get, do get slower or something like that. Um, now, what else, what else, what else, what else? Yes, I was talking about Safety Override, which is a mod. Uh, overload caps at 15 seconds? I think so, yeah. But still, 15 seconds is a long time. Usually when you overload and you have an enemy in your face and they still have flux, uh, you're probably dead. Or going to be receiving a lot of damage. Um, let me think. Safety overrides. What that does is increases your ship's speed. Uh, your combat readiness degrades faster. And um, your passive venting has been increased substantially. But you cannot manually vent anymore. You cannot fart anymore. Oh, I like to call it. Okay, um... We're gonna, you're gonna see that in action when we start battling. Um, next up, over here under the hull, you're gonna be seeing friendly, ally, or enemy. Usually this bar will be um, green for allies in your fleet, green for your practically own ships, uh, red for enemies, which is kinda obvious, and yellow for allies. Um, practically dudes that are in a different parties. Well, lords with their own ships. Think of it like that. Um, what else? Yeah, let's go with the information over here on the bottom left side. Um, zero flux engine boost. When you're not doing anything, when you don't have your shields up, when you don't, when you're not shooting anything, uh, all ships will be faster on the battlefield. Um, maximum speed for us, I think, is 150 or something like that, with zero flux engine boost. Um, it will always give you a 50% top speed to your stuff. Um, command network, that's a combat ready... No, no, no. No, that's command points recovery rate, which is part of this system, which I'm going to go in a bit. Uh, peak active performance remaining time literally tells you how long your ship is going to be in combat capable. And now we... Since we're talking about combat readiness and peak performance, we're going to be talking about combat CR, which stands for combat readiness. Um, currently, our ship is at 70%. Enemy ship is at 70%. As that goes down, there's a higher chance for our ship to start malfunctioning. Systems literally start to break down. Your, your weapons break down. Your shields break down. Your engines start breaking down. And when you reach zero combat readiness, you can no longer activate your shields. Literally, you can no longer activate your shields, and there's a very, very high chance of uh, your ship being a sitting duck. No, actually, no. There's a 100% chance of your ship being destroyed if it's in combat range when you have zero percent. Um, I, think, I think at around 25%, that's a red flag, and you need to get your ship out of there. One of the main things that you do in this game is keep an eye on all ships fighting uh, ability and then retreating them when their when their combat readiness and fighting ability is down to down to shitter you'll also usually going to be retreating um ships when enemies go through through their armor and reach their hull if they manage to survive a trade an exchange you'll want to retreat them Okay, um, what else do we got over here? So that's practically combat readiness. Uh, combat readiness, you recover it out of battle, utilizing supplies and time. Literally, ships get repaired, get maintained, and get combat ready again. Uh, there are certain actions that affect your combat readiness out of combat. Um, for example, transverse jumping and emergency burns, which we're going to be discussing when we're going to be in hyperspace or, or in a shoulder system, practically outside of combat. Um, down here, and that's, that's practically the UI that you're going to be seeing over here on this side. Uh, down here, what else you have? You practically have higher details. You have a flux, you, your hull in higher details. You have your special ship ability. All ships have a special ability. No, expect, no exceptions. I don't think there's a ship out there that doesn't have a special ability. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be unique ability. For example, there are a lot of ships that have a damper field. A damper field practically um, is a passive... It's, it's kind of a tank skill. Uh, you receive less damage uh, for a short amount of time, and it can help you... Uh, when, you're, when you're super flux heavy, you activate your damper field and retreat. Uh, just reposition and vent. 
practically you use it as a defensive tool to get outside of the enemy's range so you can vent safely and re-engage afterwards. Um, damper field will deactivate your weapons. So you're going to be getting out of there. We also have two charges of the damper field you'll see over here. And they, they're practically a heroic ability or that will be on cooldown. Some of the abilities, depending on the ship, will have a limited amount of use. Oh, yes. Yes, that is also a very, very good way of utilizing it. Uh, Reaper is a unguided torpedo that does a lot of fucking damage. It's a nuclear warhead coming towards you. It is colored red, so you know that it's bad. And you need to get out of the way or, you know, stop it from destroying you. Usually, you'll want to either get out of the way or um, utilize your shield to tank it. Uh, but it's going to be generating a lot of flux. The explosion is going to be big. And um, in this case, with a damper field, you can face tank it. No problems. And then further down, you'll be seeing your weapon groups, which you set manually. So all of these weapons that you see on the ships are the actual weapons that you've installed and you have to utilize to the best of your ability. Some of them are set on auto-fire. They will automatically fire at enemies within range uh, until, as long as they have flux. Uh, some of them you will manually select by pressing the one, two, three, four, five keys, and you'll manually fire. For right now, we have the Swarmer SRM launcher selected, uh, which is literally an anti-fighter um, missile pod, which we're clearly going to replace. Um, I'm just showing and explaining to you guys the interface for starters. Um, so, yeah, that's currently what we have selected, and it's not set to auto fire. So, even if we don't have it selected, it's not going to shoot. Also, if you have a weapon on auto fire and you have it selected, I've noticed that it doesn't fire. It doesn't fire because the computer thinks that, oh, oh, oh the player has the weapon selected, so most likely he's going to handle that. Uh, so be careful, be careful when, let's say you have your um, your light mortar selected and you want it to fire without you having to aim it. Um, and you just wonder, why is it not shooting? Why is it not shooting? Also, to quickly order a weapon to auto fire, you can control and then uh, press 2. For example, if I want the light assault guns and the auto cannons to not shoot, I just control to it and now they're not on auto fire mode. You can easily change that. But I'm, I'm going to want to keep them on auto-fire mode. Um, okay, that's kind of it. Over here, you're going to be seeing your missile ammunition. And that is pretty much it for the actual combat screen. Now, for the strategy part of the screen, um, over here, you'll see your ships. You can select any ship, and you can give it orders from down here. Uh, under me, you'll be able to see toggle autopilot. Uh, this is this is the last button. This is the last button, so you can barely see it. Uh, toggle autopilot. Your ship can also just fly on its own and fight with your current setup. This is very good for a for beginner players. If you don't feel comfortable with ships and ship management yet, you can just set it on autopilot and let the game play itself. That's literally what I did uh, last time when I streamed Star Sector. I just let the let the ship fly itself because it was doing a much better job than I did. Now I just got used to the game. I'm still learning it, but I'm a better pilot now and I prefer to command my own ship. Because usually I set them up in such a fashion that they will... They'll be useful only in my hands. Think of them as that. You're practically going to want... AI-friendly ships, which will always be uh, utilized by the AI, and you want a specialized ship that is custom-made for yourself uh, that you know that you can utilize to kick ass. Okay, what type of commands you can get? You can get light escort commands. You can order a ship to literally escort another ship. Uh, you can tell carriers to send in their fire wings to escort another ship. Uh, you can tell them to go to a location and defend it, go to a location and meet there, send civilian ships to a location. For example, if I'm trying to run from a fleet and I have a lot of freighters that are not combat, they're not combat ready, I can just tell them to all wait in a section while we try to fight off the enemies. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do, uh, but keep in mind, the orders that you give a ship are not absolute. 
Uh, depending on the fleet's behavior and the pilot, the officer, the companion that's at the helm of the ship, they will listen to your commands to the best of their abilities. For example, let's say um, I command my ship to attack this lasher, like so, right-clicking. I gave it the uh, kill order. It all also automatically goes on autopilot. Um, it will engage the enemy based on its AI. If the AI is set to super aggressive, it's going to go in. It's not going to care about its own safety and most likely suicide in the enemy. If it's on timid, if it's on medium, it's going to try to evade and strategically attack. Uh, that's why um, don't, don't, don't be super aggressive with your orders and don't uh, lash out or rage when you see a ship not doing exactly what you're telling it to do. It's, it's, it's trying its best, okay? It's trying its best based on its loadout and what, what it has. Okay, you also have two options, Full Assault and Full Retreat. A full Assault will make all of the ships extra aggressive, uh, usually when you just want to clean up the enemies. Uh, full Retreat is you tell everybody to get the fuck out of there. It needs to try harder. I'm actually going to show um, a way to modify uh, the behavior of all ships in a panel. Um, not a lot of people know about it. Um, other orders are search and destroy. You literally tell your ships to just fan out and fuck shit up. Uh, retreat, which is a retreat or the ship is going to slowly go off the battle map. It's going to it's going to get out of there, but it's going to retreat in a safe manner while defending itself. So it's not going to retreat um, if it costs the ship putting itself in danger. If I'm going to tell my ship to retreat and the enemy's over here, it's going to slowly glide around it, fight, and then get away. You also have the direct retreat order where you simply um, tell the ship to get the fuck out of there at maximum speed without caring about its safety. Usually if you have a clear line of getting the fuck out, you want to go for direct retreat. If you have enemies on your way out, uh, you're going to want to go with um, normal retreat order. Also, your ships, if you're in, um, if you're the aggressor, if you're engaging the enemy on equal grounds, your ships will always retreat on the bottom side of the battlefield. If you are trying to disengage from a fleet and you are running away from them, uh, your objective will be to reach the top of the map and you'll need to run over here to the top while you're being chased by the enemy fleet from down here and from the sides depending on the ship's ship size usually destroyer size and above will always come from the bottom side our frigates which are the smallest ships will come from the sides or can be deployed from the sides you also do not have to deploy all of your ships you can um wait for the enemy to be in a weakened state and then send in reinforcements. Uh, this is this all comes in play with the amount of fleet that you have, the amount of combat readiness that your ships have. For example, if I have ships that are on combat readiness 50%, I'm not going to send them directly at the beginning of the battle. I'm going to let the enemy uh, wear itself out um, because the enemy also has combat readiness. It will also slowly, slowly go down as the, the battle progresses. And speaking of that, yes, combat readiness does go down as the combat combat progresses. Uh, the more you stay in the battlefield, the lesser combat readiness you're going to have. High-tech ships will lose combat readiness faster. Low-tech ships lose combat readiness slower. Um, but I think you can get the idea. Usually high-tech ships are faster, hit harder, um, have a po more powerful alpha strike. Uh, while low-tech ships are more for sustained fighting, slugging it out. Midline ships are a balance, a compromise of the two. Okay, uh, let's talk about the UI that's on the enemy ships. Uh, real quick, uh, you're going to be able to see its weapon loadout, its flux and hull, its health. Um, you're going to be seeing its range and speed. And you're also going to be seeing the type of ship, the name, and what's its loadout. In this case, it's a close support variant. Also, uh, the first part, Sim Patrisk, that's the name of the dude that's currently flying that vessel. Loss of speed is the same. It's just the high tech have less uh, points in general. I see. 
Okay. Practically, what I've noticed is that high-tech ships are high risk, high reward, and usually players tend to prefer high-tech ships because you can get some insane insert phase ability here uh, abilities. Okay. Uh, what else can I talk? Um, deployment points. I think you have a maximum amount of deployment points, um, so you can not have you know as many ships as you want. Um, I think it's a 500 versus, I think it's set to the maximum. In my case, the 500 can go above above that. So that's practically 500 ships on the battlefield at the same time. It can get fucking insane. Also, I need to talk about command points. So you cannot give uh, your ships commands as much as possible. Uh, you ha you're limited by your command points, but you usually don't want to give your ships uh, a lot of orders at the beginning of the battle, I'll usually just form groups, like tell some heavy hitters to stay close to... No, tell some small um, defensive ships to stay close to carriers, which have a lower defense, to protect them, stuff like that. Uh, set up wolf packs, tell frigates to stick with frigates, tell the faster ships to stick with faster ships, uh, stuff like that, stuff like that. You, we'll get the hang of it as we go through the game. And... Oh my god, are we done? Are we finally done? Can we finally get a little bit on uh, battle and ship customization? I guess clean, clean disengage. If you get to 100%, you can clean disengage out of the battle. You can retreat, and the f enemy fleet will not be able to follow you. Okay, just to show you guys how the battle is looking. Play the game is overrated. Mm -hmm. Let's gain control of the ship. Good, autopilot disabled. Let me just get my bearings. I get the swarmers. Uh, as you can see, the ship has its shield activated. We're gonna get in closer. And start firing. Okay, get out of there. That's venting. Okay, we gotta get out of its range. Um, let me explain what happened over there. So you heard that riling up sound? That is a special ability of the, Lash the Lasher. It has a ammo feeder that practically increases its fire rate. When you hear that sound, you wanna get away from it because it's gonna be shooting a lot, lot faster. Once the ability goes away, that's the moment when we try to get in its face. Also, it's defensive weapons, it's point defense weapons are coming in, pl in play there. And now we're going to be pressuring it. We don't need to keep our shields up at all times. Okay. We're keeping up with it. It is getting desperate. It's trying to fight back. And it is... And we're overloaded. We got to get in away from it. You don't want to be close when you don't have any shields because most likely the enemy is going to deploy missile weapons. So, as you can see, it can hold its own against the Lasher, but neither ships can um, do a decisive hit. And I have activated my dampener field because I usually go with a ship with an ammo feeder by mistake. Happens. I practically like what that ship has. Okay, get out, get out, get out. I've deactivated my ship there so I don't overload. Sometimes you just gotta tank some hits to your armor. And this is gonna go on and on and on with the current setup. Okay, um, let's go back to this screen. Let's talk about what's going on over here. So we're gonna strip it up again. Um, over here you can change the names and I've asked you guys on Discord to give me sh uh, names for ships. Let's name it. Uh, we're going to go for, let me see, uh, we're going to call it the Harpoon, in this case. The HPI, which stands for Hit Point In, Harpoon. Even though it's probably not going to have any Harpoons on it. There's a, there's a weapon called the Harpoon. Okay, uh, next step, what you want to do, first of all, is decide on the main weapons that you're going to have on the ship. And now I'm going to be able to explain weapons for you guys. Um, if you click on it, you're going to be having a list with all of the weapons available that you can put in that mount. 
This is a small hybrid turret and it has that line of sight. Since it's a turret, it is able to turn on its own. If you are manually firing it, it will always follow your mouse. If you have it on autopilot, on auto fire, anything that is in that range, it will target, it will auto fire. Depending on the weapon type, some of them will prioritize certain targets. For example, point defense weapons will always prioritize missiles and small fighters. Interceptors, let's go with that. Um, usually what I like to do with this ship, hello Sion, welcome to the end. Hmm? Uh, when are you joining the team, Reforge here? I'm sorry, uh, to what team are you referring to, Sion? I'm sorry, um, I think this is my first time seriously streaming. Reach. Oh, sorry, mate. Not gonna be participating in the meeting. <laughs> Not gonna be participating in the meetup. Get a stream. Okay, so, um, let's explain weapons a little bit. Uh, usually there are three general types of weapons. Anti-shield, which excel at taking down enemy shields. Anti-armor, which is useful at taking down the armor under the shield. Um, usually anti-armor is also useful against uh, destroying hull. There are also dedicated weapons to destroy hull, uh, but I don't really find them super useful. And then there are suppression weapons, uh, which are useful to either keep a ship with its shield up, you know, keep it on its toes. Thanks, Jont. Um, either uh, take out its, some of its systems, like its, um, like its weapons or its engines. For example, I fucking love salamander rockets. Uh, they they're guided missiles that target the engines of the enemy, and they just take them out, and they just flay them out and just fly to space without any goddamn control. To the whim of velocity. Okay, um, this is this for example is an ion cannon. Um, it is a suppression weapon and it is meant to take out the enemy's uh, weapon systems. Also, um, my god, there's so much to discuss. Um, over here, you're going to be seeing black weapons, red weapons, and yellow weapons. This is pra this is going to practically tell you the source of the weapon. The black weapons are in your inventory. The red weapons are from the black market, and the yellow weapons are from the open market. It actually literally says that over there under it. Uh, what else you're going to be able to see here? Uh, besides its role, which I really recommend that you check out, you can also fully test this weapons out by simply running a simulator. Um, you'll be interested in its range. If you want a super melee brawler type ship, you're not going to be giving it super long range weapons. Um, if you want to make a sniper ship, you're most likely going to be focusing on weapons with longer, longer range. Makes sense, right? Um, are there any rail guns here? Sadly not. Okay, that's going to be shitty. Um, another type of weapon is point defense. This is literally used for defending a ship. In rare cases, you're going to be using this as an offensive weapon. Uh, there's a safety override brawler build that simply you put as many, many high damage point defense weapons on your ship and just get into the enemy's face and shred them down. Uh, but we're probably not going to go for one of those on this ship. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Also, the color around um, around a weapon uh, shows you its weapon type. Uh, blue stands for energy weapons. Uh, yellow stands for ballistic weapons. And green stands for missiles, which are... There are no missiles here. And then over here, the numbers on the right uh, simply shows you the cost of equipping the weapon. For example, this ion cannon cost me six ordnance points. If I have this filled out, filled out, I can't put anything more on the ship. Okay, so in the front, I'd like to add a anti sh some anti shield weapons, like an auto cannon. The okay, we're actually going to go for the light dual auto cannon. It's an auto cannon, but it has double the damage and bigger flux. I think it's more flux efficient than a light auto cannon. Flux a hundred, uh, dual auto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. So practically, this is going to be our main gun. It's going to take out the enemy's shields. 
then um, we'll want some anti-armor. I'm going to go for a light assault gun. And you can either go for another light assault gun or go for the ion cannon. I think I'm going to go for the ion cannon just to offer some suppression against the enemy. Um, practically, the ion cannon is useless against shields, but if you hit the enemy on the hull, on the armor, it's going to start arcing and causing um, disruptions in its systems, take, take down its weapons, take down its engines. It's going to cause massive chaos on the enemy ship, and sometimes it can fully disable a ship, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go in for that suppression, a little bit of support utility weapon. And then do you guys, let's see, swarmers are meh, uh, swifters are meh. Uh, yes, when it comes to missiles, we're going to be having anti-small craft, anti-armor, anti-shield. Our torpedoes would simply do damage against everything, but usually are unguided and just go forward. Uh, what else do you got? Finishers, which do a lot of damage against hull. So if a enemy has a stripped ship, if you go for a harpoon with a finisher, it's going to be doing a lot of damage. It's also very, very useful against um, armor as well. So just grabbing them. Some defensive missiles like the flare gun, which is bleh. Uh, some dedicated anti-shield, which are the sabot, which are some of my sabos. They're, they're my favorite, sa favorite missiles. Which I think I'm going to be adding to the ship and then no salamanders over here which is kind of sad uh, those are hands down my favorite slow moving heavily armored guided missiles that are meant to hit an enemy's ship and just make it fly out of control beautiful um what else once you get the hang of it you're going to be able to understand the type of damage that a weapon does if you read over there on the bottom side at the ancillary data, you're gonna see the exact type of damage a weapon does. Uh, kinetic, which is literally dedicated to do damage versus shields, and it's very bad against armor. Uh, fragmentation, which is very bad. This is usually point defense weapons do fragmentation damage. Um, very bad against shields and armor, but very strong against hull. Uh, very useful against missiles and uh, fighters. Uh, what else? Energy weapons, energy damage, uh, which does equal damage against shields and armor, uh, but usually um, can't cause a lot of flux, can cause overloads on the enemy ships unless it's a specialized uh, or dedicated energy weapon that does exactly that. And explosive damage, which we'll most likely find on missiles. There you go. High explosive damage, which does which does two hundred percent damage to armor. Literally, a armor shredding weapon, and fifty percent damage to shields. So, not a good idea to fight your anti-armor missiles or weapons against a shield. It's it's a little bit of rock paper scissors. It's not that complicated once you get the hang of it. The idea is simple. You got to break their shield. You got to pierce for their armor. You got to take out this hull. Thus, the ship the ship is destroyed. That's it. Now I'm going to grab a glass of water. And you you got to be careful. A bigger weapon is not always better because each weapon, each time it is fired, will generate flux. So, for example, if this light dual autocannon keeps on firing, we're going to be producing 143 flux a second. Remember, if our flux reaches max, which is our capacity to 2,200, if our uh, flux hits max, we overload, our shields go down, our weapons go down. Which is bad. So we, we can't just put the biggest, meanest guns. We gotta make a compromise somewhere. Okay, uh, light assault gun for small missile. I think I'm just gonna go with... I guess that single Sabo. Um, this sa this rocket launches, locks on a target, and then explodes in multiple pe pellets of kinetic energy. Just It's kind of like a shotgun rocket. You'll see. And then always try to remember to dedicate one at least one slot for a point defense. If a, if a missile follows you, if a fighter follows you, these are very fast weapons that you cannot easily shoot down manually so you'll want a dedicated weapon to take them to take them down for you in this case 
The Vulcan and Cannon is fine, but later on we're going to be finding better stuff. Uh, let's see if there's a better defense weapon over here. Uh, no, Force Mortar is not a point defense. Huh, wait a sec. The Force Mortar, this is a general weapon. A general weapon will do equal damage to both shields and armor. Usually a general weapon is an all-purpose weapon. You, you'll you want some of them later in the game. Sometimes you can just equip general purpose weapons on your ship that will do equally, equally good against shields and armor at the same time. Uh, let's see, let's see on that. Uh, range is kind of low. What's on? What's uh, the range on the light auto cannon? A light auto cannon is six hundred, while the force mortar is five fifty. We could try and play around with it. Maybe just equip the ship full force mortar. We'll see how it goes. We actually need to take into consideration the accuracy of the weapon and the um, projectile speed. Yes, exactly, Emil. I've never seen it in action, so that's why I want to check it out. M Mini flat cannon best against fighters. It can also take missiles, but the fast, the faster the missile, it's the mini flak cannon is a slow defense weapon, so uh, it'll usually not keep up with missiles. Uh, in this case, I think I might just go with the light machine guns. Uh, light machine guns have a higher range. Let's see what's the accuracy on it. Good, while the Vulcan has uh, poor accuracy, but the Trinity is excellent. Yeah, let's go with some light machine guns on it. Plus, the ordinance points is. A little bit low. Also, we're going to rely on defending ourselves against missiles, mostly on the shield. Okay, now that we've kind of equipped it with weaponry, you'll want to go to the weapon group section. Over here, you manually select... Yes, I know, another high detail panel. You'll manually select uh, what, what and where the weapons are assigned on. You can also press auto and the game will assign it for you. Uh, but for right now, I want all of the weapons to set to auto fire on their own. I don't have to manually aim any of this shit. And I want the Sabo to be on manual control, and I will always stay on the Sabo ready to fire it at the opportune moment. You can also link the weapons. For example, I can link these light dual auto cannons and they'll try to fire at the same time. Over here, you'll see their arc coverage. So practically these are frontal, this is on the side, this is on the other side, uh, these are defensive on the back, and the Sabo is a hard point directly in front. A turret will have a, l a larger sight, line of sight. A hard point will usually only uh, shoot in a direction, in a small little cone, and you'll have to manually steer your ship so you can get in, in sight of the enemy. Hopefully it makes sense. And also over here, it's going to tell you the total amount of flux and how much it's going to cost to shoot all the weapons at the same time. Uh, you can also see this over here, weapon flux per second. If all of our weapons are firing, we're generating 543 flux per second, which is insane. That's why we're going to be adding some vents to it. So, vents simply increase our flux dissipation, our passive flux dissipation rate, which is right here. Um, we always vent uh, 275 flux at all times. Um, the more vents we have, the better it is. Hey, Katnik, welcome back to the end. I'm explaining the basics of Star Sector. Yes, indeed, long time no see. It's taking a while. Mm. The capacitors simply increase... Uh, that's a lot of flux weapons. This looks like an SO build. I, yes. I feel like it's an SO build. If I had rail guns on the front, I'd probably go without an SO. Yes, yes, it can take a while. Okay, so we went maximum capacitor and maximum vents, but wait, we still have space for ordnance. We still have ordnance points. What else can we put it on the ship? We can add hull features and the mods. These are special passives that can alter the entirety of how your ship functions. Usually, you'll want to add, you'll want to add the vents at the maximum. What this SO? SO means safety override. It's a mod that I'm going to explain in a second. Alien super weapon. Welcome to the end. Um, so usually you'll want to add vents at the maximum on direct combat ships, on support ships. 
that just stay in the back line and just keep on firing six, uh, salvos of weaponry, artillery, practically, practically artillery pieces. Um, capacitors will be more important because they'll need more defense. You'll With those ships, you'll just want to have your flux dissipation equal to the amount of weapon flux that gets generated. In this case, we just want as much venting as possible. Now, let's add some hull mods, hull features and stuff. And then we're going to be filling up the rest with capacity, ca capacitors. So, what can we add on the ship? We can add additional berthing, which gives us more crew on the ship. We don't want this. It's useless to us. We don't want more soul. We don't want more crew on the ship. It doesn't provide us with any extra benefit. This is a combat ship. We're not interested in that. Auxiliary fuel tanks. Uh, do we want this to go further into hyperspace? Again, no. We don't need this on the ship. Uh, we can have ships that are dedicated to carry fuel for the fleet. So we don't need this. Auxiliary thrusters. Now, auxiliary thrusters, you're thinking, oh, this is going to make the ship go fast. This is going to make the ship go brr. No, it's not going to do that. Auxiliary thrusters will help with the ship's turn rate, how fast the ship will turn. In this case, I feel like the ship is just fine. I don't need any extra, but of course, not all of these changes are permanent. You can add and play around with into simulation to get the best ship for you. Okay, then we got blast doors. Install additional hermetic and heavily reinforced doors at the critical junctures. This just increases the hull integrity, so the base HP of the ship is increased. And also, um, the ship takes fewer crew casualties. If a ship gets hit in the hull, it will also each hit will also uh, cause loss of life of the crew. This will minimize that. We got expanded cargo holds, uh, which again some sh combat ships or carrier ships can be. I'm, I don't know. I don't think it improves strafing. Emil, could you could you help with that? Because you seem to be to know uh, some of a bit of this game. Does auxiliary thrusters help with uh, strafing? I tend to not think so. But it is a very, very uh, valid question. It would make sense to improve that as well. And I'm sure there's a mod out there that you can install to cause auxiliary thrusters to do that. Um, for expanded cargo holds, as I said, uh, carriers um, sometimes can be converted into freighter ships. It wouldn't. St strafing depends on acc and acceleration. Okay, okay, so perfect. Uh, and stable injectors will help with that and other mods that we don't know yet. As you travel the galaxy, you're going to find schematics and blueprints to learn additional mods. We have very few, actually, right here. Uh, for expanded cargo hold, you'll usually want to put this on freighters to have extra capacity. Or you could add it to um, ships that you just want to convert to uh, freighters. Or they simply have too much ordnance points. You have no fucking idea what to do with them with the extra ordinance points and you just add extra cargo space. Unstable stop speed only, accelerator is unaffected. Yes, indeed. Okay, a flux coil gives you a bonus to maximum capacity and flux distribution will give you more for flux dissipation. Usually you want to install these once you have maximum vents or capacitators. It's practically to add, to add an extra oomph to that, to that stuff, to that flux dissipation. I find flux distributors to be actually quite useful in my playthroughs. To be honest, it's one of my favorite, but it really falls off the bigger ship you have. Okay, hardened subsystems. This increases the peak performance operating time for ships. Literally, combat readiness decreases slower. That's it. And they also stay at peak performance more, which is awesome. Uh, I really, really like this one, Hardened Subsystems. Hmm. The only real exterior modifier is the one of the combat skills and the SO. Pretty much. A Reinforced Bulkhead. Uh, this, again, increases your hull HP. And it stops your ship from breaking apart. So if your ship gets defeated in battle, um, there's a 100% chance of you... I hope it's a 100% chance. It says almost always recoverable, so I guess it's not a 100% chance, but it's a very high percent chance of your ship not getting destroyed and you being able to recover it after battle. Then, 
we have one of the spicy i'm not gonna say controversial yeah i know emil i know that's it's exactly as it says uh one of the spicier mods the safety overrides now um a lot of people like to run safety overrides on their own ship um this disables safety protocols and increases the top speed in combat so simply your ship goes vroom much faster in combat but um yeah yeah it's a lifestyle it's it's a choice on some ships it's essential but there are very very few ships that that it's essential on um sometimes because you're limited because of the market sometimes you're not gonna have the weapons that you want for your ship uh so you're just gonna have to make a compromise just fit it up with a lot of short range uh stuff and just put so on it yes for short it's called so a lot of people call it so um what else does it do no uh no manual venting you cannot press v to manually vent flux but it, it increases the the passive flux by a large amount so for example we are at 275 bam we're now at 550 with the safety overrides we can outrun the lasher that we we fought in the simulation and we can easily keep on shooting without increasing our flux a large amount is exactly t two times oh really awesome thank you i did not know that it it says factor by two. Oh, so it's it's a multiplier but times two cool cool so if i go 175 it gives me double the 175 oh my god yes it does so most likely safety over overrides you'll want with as many events as possible makes sense but it reduces the peak performance of the ship by a factor of three and it reduces the weapon range so any ship that has over 450 range gets nerfed it, it brings it down to 450 so you do not want range web um, super sniper weapons on this on this ship if you, if you plan on building safety overrides uh besides that you gotta be fast you gotta fight quick hit hard get out your ship is not going to be able to stay in battle for long can you put safety overrides and hardened subsystems i'm curious you can but still peak performance will be the same okay and then we got unstable injectors uh this increases the top speed in combat by 25 20 15 15. okay um let me just explain what it what it refers to all those different type of weapons the first number 25 applies to, fr uh, to frigates the 20 applies to destroyers the 15 applies to cruisers and the fifth the last 15 applies to capital ships that's how you need to think of it when you install all of these mods in this case the same uh 50 increase for um f um frigates 30 for destroyers and i think 20 for the big boys can you install an so on a capital ship yes no manual venting with so you cannot press v to vent but you'll understand once we get into battle if you don't shoot and you don't have your shields activated uh you're gonna be venting incredibly fast i'll show you you'll see you'll see you'll see we'll try both styles I'm actually curious to see without safety overrides first. Um, let's check um, in unstable injectors. Interferes with weapon targeting and other vulnerable systems, which reduces the weapon range by 15% and increases the, the fire replacement time by 25%. So this is kind of a compromise. If you don't really want to go balls to the wall safety override, you just get stable injectors. And I might go for this. I'll see. I'll see. I'll think about it. Um, there are mods out there that simply give you a direct buff. Like, okay, now you fly faster. Congratulations. Uh, but usually mods will have um, benefits and penalties. Dedicated targeting core. Uh, this, um, which, is on, which is with red, you can install it on a ship. Dedicated targeting core increases the range of all ballistic and energy weapons by 35 to 50%, and this is only for cruisers and capital ships. Uh, there's also a, I think it's integrated targeting optics. No, I, ICU, ITU, integrated targeting unit. It's a mod that increases um, the same thing, ballistics and energy weapons, but it can be applied to all types of ships. 
uh, to frigates and destroyers as well. I really love it, and I hope I find it somewhere. Because I usually like to go with sniper fleets. Uh, ITU is better than uh, DTC. I'll have to check that out. I literally have to see. Okay, and then militarized subsystems. Uh, this is to remove a certain mod from civilian grade ships. Uh, we don't have a civilian grade ship, we have a combat ship, but civilian grade ships have those penalties that I've explained when we've uh, watched the, the fleet screen. Um, it will practically remove the effects of the mod, increases its maximum burn speed, and let's see, supply and combat readiness costs reduced from deployment, but it, it doubles the crew. It just doubles the crew of the ship. Uh, DTC is just there so you can feel larger ships before finding ITU. I see. Okay, sure. I agree. Okay, maximum vents. Uh, let's try without safety overrides first. If I go capacitators, I can add, let's add flux distributor, which is to help with the dissipation, uh, harden subsystems, and then go all in on capacitators. This practically gives us the maximum amount of combat time. Hello, Gre uh, Greg the Great. Welcome back to the end, dude. Uh, playing Star Sector, well, mostly explaining Star Sector right now, kind of giving it a basic rundown. It's a very good game, and I once once uh, I finish streaming, I recommend that you in, you see the entire uh, VOD of it. I'm also probably going to be putting this on YouTube. Uh, the entire vo uh, VOD of it, because I explain most of the aspects of the game. It's as much as I can. While my voice keeps up. Okay, uh, just to make sure everything's on auto-fire. Good. Let's run a simulation. Also, uh, after the simulation, I'm going to show you guys another trick. Yeah, pretty much second stream, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Uh, usually for frigates, I like to uh, fight against lashers. Lashers are pretty powerful frigates, so I usually like to keep them as the... You know, if I can beat a lasher, that's a good fucking frigate. That's the idea. Okay, let's select the Sabo. Th that only Sabo that we got. Hey, Black Goblin. So we're going to get in closer. Now, we're going to try to maintain our distance from the enemy. We're going to slowly move forward. Hopefully, our weapons should outrange his. Yeah, no, it was the only thing that I could find in the shop. Slowly get in there. Activate shields, because we're in the same range. Get away. Get away from it. Sadly, we took more damage than I kind of wanted to. I'm going to try to bait its auto ammo feeder. Yeah, there it is. We're, we're trying to get away from it. And now we're going to engage. Trying to face the enemy. Launch a Sabo. And we overloaded because I did not activate my shield. And we're getting attacked by anti-armor missiles. Yep. Okay, one of our engines is down. We got a reposition. It also took a little bit of our hull. Uh, you can use Q and E to strafe. Okay, let's try to go in again. I notice that with this ship, I kind of want to show it one side. But yeah, I feel like... Uh, we don't really have that big of a bang for our buck. Hmm? Uh, do you prefer to play with shift to turn or shift inverted? Mm, I don't know. Let me check. This is what you're talking about? It's like that. <laughs> then I don't know. I don't know how it's set. Okay, vent, haha, -ha, it didn't shoot at sabos, it, it shoots at it's our harpoons. No, 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 you're not getting away this time. Come on. Okay, and 
Ah, the dampener field. On this ship, I always forget about the damper field. Uh, do we have any chance of taking this ship? But I think it ran, ran out of harpoons, so we should be fine now. But we've barely, we're barely doing it. Oh, yeah, no, without the cursor. I don't really like the cursor thing. There we go. That was a good use of that. Okay, and activated that stuff again. Also, hmm, oh, okay. I'm also going to use that dampener field to stick it in him. To stay super close. Okay, yeah. His shield's out. And we're overloaded. God damn it, it's a good thing he, he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any harpoons left. We would have been dead there. So yeah. Don't like it. I don't like the setup. I'm I'm probably gonna add uh probably gonna be adding SO. Okay, um if you have no idea what to put on a ship, if you have no fucking clue. I know it's useless pro harpoons. Um, you go click on auto fit and over here you'll receive recommended designs. You can also even set up your own designs if you want to. For this one, the recommended uh, weapons are one light assault gun, which we have, an annihilator rocket launcher, which we don't have, but I feel like that's an NT fighter missile launcher, which is meh. One ion cannon, two Vulcan cannons for defense, and two light auto cannons, uh, which were the previous version that we had beforehand. It also even recommends how much flux capacitors and flux vents and what hull mods to add to it. In this case, I kind of don't want to go for that because I literally want better, more heavy weapons. You can also literally tell it how to spec your ship. If you click on this it will auto-equip the ship with the closest types of weapons the AI can find. Uh, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to take off Flux Distributor, Hardened Subsystems, take off the Capacitators, um, and we're going to add Safety Overrides and two more Capacitators. Uh, this makes the ship incredibly dangerous and it's going to go out super fast. Let's do this. Also, I, w I wish there was a way for me to just deploy a lasher automatically. Also, we are much faster now. We can outrun the lasher. Okay, yeah, as you can see, it's like we're manually venting. You saw that? You saw that flux just going down without me having to V it? And then we can safely disengage because of the extra speed. And now we're going to try to attack it while it's venting. Mm. Activated its fast attack yet again. And go back in. Activate Damner Field. Just to stick in there and go for another hit. There we go. Our Ion Cannon is now hitting through its shield. We've completely disabled the ship now. Super zipping all over the place. If we deactivate the shield right now, we're gonna vent manually. Whoa there! It's shooting its harpoons in desperation right now. Because it knows that it's gonna get destroyed if he didn't push me off there. I think I could have face tanked it. Yeah, and that's the signal. That's the signal that our flagship's combat readiness is decreasing rapidly. We are now at 68 combat readiness. We're not going to have a good time. Hey, Sif Lord, welcome back to the end, dude. Oh, uh, I thought I pressed pause. It's almost gone. Let's shoot that Sabo. Surprise it. And there it goes. Yay! We won our first battle. So yeah, as you can see, that safety override really, really, really helps me out with this. Uh, usually what I like to run on, uh, 
on Centurions. This is a Centurion class frigate. Uh, I like to put, instead of two light dual cannons, I like to put two railguns on it. Railguns are more uh, flux hungry, but they, they outrange most other frigates. I could try it out with, um, let's, let's quickly undo that. There we go. What is this game? You see this for the first time? This is Star Sector. It's considered to be Mountain Blade in space. My man. I'd like to add Light Duel Auto Cannon. Take the blaster off. Oh, yes. Let's try something out. I'd like to see the Force Mortars. Apparently, the Force Mortars are good against any target. Um, practically, they're both good against shields and armor. I'd like to see how they act up. And you know what? Show me the Annihilator rocket pod. I've never, I never used that one, so let's let's check it out. And for this, what's the range on it? Five fifty. I'm probably gonna so it. So it up the ass. Oh, okay. I don't have enough. Do I want to so? Yes, yes, I do want to so it. There's a lot of weapon flux cost for the ship. Uh, what's eating? What's eating flux? Just the mortars in general, I think. Okay, let's see it out. Probably not going to be a, as good of a setup as the first one. Uh, I'm just going to click on auto. Uh, the force mortars will shoot on their own. I just want the United Rocket Bus to be manually controlled by me. Uh, we're going to run a simulation and see what it can do. Also, if you want your, uh, your target to not fight back, there's a mod where you can add simply dummy ships. You can just utilize to shoot at. But I like my targets to bite. Okay, that's all of, no, that's just one. Let's see how it's going to go. Whoa, holy shit. Oh, well, there's our overload. Yeah, I know, Emil. That's what I was thinking as well. Yep, uh, unguided missiles just going straight. Pfft, that's horrible. Oh my god, that's bad. Such a bad weapon. Okay, go dampen it up. Sweet Jesus, it's, that mortar is horrible. In what situation would you use this piece of shit? You can't live without your cubes anymore? I get you, man. Undo that shit. Nah, seriously. That's a horrible weapon. What else do we got? Phase blasters. Uh, but they're flux hungry. Nah. Put the light duels. Put the light assault. Keep the iron on the right. Give me, sadly, that only one Sabo. Good. And... I don't like safety override. I'm going to be honest with you. I like to have staying staying power in battle. I like to sit there and keep on pelting at the enemy at my own leisure. That's why I like sniper ships. Um, but for right now, I don't have a choice. I, I got to go with that shit. Four mortars can work. You just need stuff like G, uh, GCAI. Oh, gun control AI or ordinance expertise. Uh one to make the bullets go faster yeah fair enough okay yeah that makes sense i guess that can work uh now we're, we're gonna have to so it this time around essing soing it up will be the way to go uh good looking good this this ship is a death trap right now shit can go very very bad very very quick with an so'd ship but some people say that so is love so is life uh, you're going to have to play it yourself and decide on your own. Okay, so that's going to be our first ship. Uh, quickly, I'm going to look in the uh, shop to see if I want to buy anything. I think there wasn't anything that I'd like to buy. Uh, Vigilance, Brawler and K. No. What else do we got in the system? What? The forces? No. Okay. Okay, they're not patrolling. 
Uh, what, what else do we got in the system? We got a pirate base in the northeast. Pirate base. Uh, pirates are pretty straightforward. They want. They want you dead. We got a Sharu, which is an independent world and an abandoned terraforming platform, which we're going to be using as a storage facility. Okay. We can also go to a Sharu to check what's up over there. Um, also, over here, always activate your fuel range to see how far you can go out. What else do I usually activate? I usually activate constellations. Because it's kind of cool to see each location and what its name is. For exploration, I usually keep that off. And I keep inhabited on uh, just so I know where I can have safe havens. Because if you, if you get out there and you run out of supplies, well, yeah, supplies slash fuel, you're going to have a bad time. Okay, so let's go back in. And we're going to travel to... A Sharu. By right clicking over there, it's going to set an auto course there, and we're going to start going. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's not a good idea. Also, there's a domain era sensor boy from one of the mods. You can participate in a small battle and get some starter starter stuff, but we're not going to go for that just yet. Okay, uh, to explain the interface over here, you again have a radar. Uh, you have your destination over here with distance, fuel consumption, and days. With your current speed, how long will it take to reach that location? As we gain speed, uh, this is going to go down. So it's not going to take us 72 days to reach there. It's insane like that. Um, over here on the left, of course, you have your um, tabs, which let's see if we get, went through everything. Uh, inventory. Map by pressing tab. Your Intel screen, which tells you all of the quests available that you heard on the relays, on the radios. Um, so right off the bat, you're not going to know of all available quests in the world, in the galaxy. You have to be near a relay, and that relay needs to reach with the signal towards you so you can intercept the transmission and know what the fuck's going on. For right now, there's a system bounty in Corvus, so sticking around here to fight might be a good idea. If we get another combat vessel, we'll see. Or simply help out the uh, hegemony, fight some pirates. Yeah, and usually, usually when you start off, you always have the system bounty in Corvus, which is awesome. So, practically, for 60 days, for every enemy of the hegemony you kill, uh, you're going to be getting cash for each frigate, for example. Um, the enemies of the hege hegemony are all of these guys, which each one is, is its individual faction. We're interested in fighting pirates. Everybody hates pirates. In this game. Uh, pirates and Ludic Path, which were practically space terrorists. Okay, um, of course you have all of the tabs that will show you, um, the types of, the types of, uh, quests that you can have. For example... There's a local quest in this system, which is a system bounty. There are other other missions out there, like analyze a derelict ship or survey an unstable world. Um, this is your location, the shiny star. Yes, space terrorists. And that's the location of said quests. You can actually select them for more information. Be careful on what quests you do, because you'll be requiring certain um, equipment. For example, to survey that unstable arid world for the 9th Battle Group, that's the faction that put the quest out there, uh, you're going to need at least 60 heavy machinery, 300 crew, and 70 supplies. Which will be, con well, the 70 supplies will be consumed. I don't think the heavy machinery gets, and the crew gets consumed, but I sh I'm pretty sure the supplies get consumed when you analyze the ship. Also, I'm scratching my leg. There we go. Also, uh, all quests have a time limit. Um, or it can be withdrawn. Uh, so if you want a quest to remain and be available only to you until that, uh, that uh, time limit expires, you accept it from over here. You click on this little son of a bitch. If you're not really interested in it, it will just fade away after 120 days. But if you want to do one particular request and it's once, you want it to be yours, you accept it. Because sometimes other dudes around the world 
will just take the quest from you, and the contract will be withdrawn. Exactly like you withdraw it from others, it can be withdrawn from you. Okay, what else do we got? Bounties, diplomatic profiles, which literally give you information on all of the factions within the game. Pays much earlier than its duration. Yep, pretty much. Uh, there's a lot of... Mm, there's a lot of factions over here. Most of them have been added via mods. To give you a quick rundown, as Syndicate, uh, they focus more on speed and freighter capacity on trade. Blackrock Diplomacy uh, have low quality... No, they're technocratic, really. Hmm. Usually they have low... I guess they're mid-tier. That's fine. I don't really know super much about all of them. I know most of them, which are pretty cool. And most of these factions have unique ships and unique equipment only available to those factions. Of course, you can also find them on the black market or in the open market to buy some, if you know what I mean. So you're good. You're good to go. Uh, Celestia Mount Circle. Hippies? Hippies with... Uh, the, what's interesting with them, they don't have any medium slot weapons. They... they but almost all of their ships have a uh, fighter wing. Which is kind of cool. If, if you like the carriers, if you like the carriers from StarCraft, you'll want these guys. Also should try a single frigate start. You're just so damn bad at dogfights. Uh, sure, go for it, alien. Next agents can nab ships for you if you've exhausted other options. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the Sol Meconian, a industry faction that has some really, really cool ships and interesting weapons. Uh, Diablo Avionics has some very cool looking ships and weapons. Henneclef, indeed, Starch Sector. Hegemony, uh, which we're currently walking through. Uh, they're from the base game. Imperium. The Imperium uh, worships the AI gods and has heavily used AI technology. They have some very, very DACA-heavy weapons. I actually tested them out uh, earlier today. My good god, the machine guns in this location are so sexy. Uh, junk Pirates, which are a neutral, uh, neutral um, faction, again added via mod. The Imperium is also added via mods. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention which are not added via mod. Junk Pirates, which are, which are a neutral faction, but usually you'll want to fight them. Legio Infernalis, a military-focused pirate faction that you're going to be kicking ass. Hey, Solid, welcome back to the end. Or, welcome to the end. I'm not sure you've been here before. Uh, Lodic Church, which is uh, another band of hippies. They detest technology. They consider, in the, ne in the words of Seth, um, they consider AI to be Satan itself. And... This is from the base game, and then the Lodic Path, which is the extremist faction of the Lodic Church. These are space terrorists. They hate anything that's technological. They'll most likely fly highly explosive ships towards you. ORA, um, highly technological faction. Pack, which is, I think, more on the... A more secluded, smaller faction. Persian League, which is from the base game, kind of the main um, and main enemy of the hegemony. Hey, all's good, solid. All's good. Welcome back. Uh, Reparation Society. This is a mercenary faction. They will lose, usually randomly have uh, randomly go hostile against other enemies. Cyanation, highly technological faction that I haven't checked out yet. Shadow Yard. Uh, which has a lot of water-based ships. Some interesting stuff in the Shadow Yard that I really, really got to further investigate. Um, are you liking Star Sector? Do you plan on doing a one-off, or do you want to bring it as a stable entry? I would love to bring it as a stable entry if you guys enjoy it. Um, and of course, this is going to be the, only the first stream where we're just going to be talking and explaining all of the mechanics of the game. I kind of want it to be... I want it to be a soft guide, a soft beginner's guide to it. Um, but, well, someday I'm probably going to try to make a more dedicated guide where we're going to be systemically talking about all aspects of the game. I'm going to make a battle plan, and we're going to do it. Uh, but for right now, I still need to learn shit. 
I still need to learn stuff about the game, so we're gonna get there. Uh, Sindarin Diktat, a military, uh, military political state. Uh, that is from the base game. Haven't really seen anything Sindrian Diktat specific. I'll have to check them out a little bit more. Uh, Sylphan Research and Development. This is a mega corporation that has high tech. Uh, this is a mod faction. Has high tech ships and has a very specific mod to them. The Null Space mod. So practically all of their ships have a Null Space generator that uh, really helps them. I think. They practically have an inbuilt SO to them. I'm gonna have to further study them. I've never managed to buy one of their ships because they're weird. And um, usually their ships synergize with each other. So if you want to grab Sulfan R&D ships, you'll want to um, have a pure fleet of Sulfan ships so they can synergize with each other. It's, it's weird like that. They power each other and there are certain weapons that... Um, do damage to everyone except null null space ships, except sulfonate R&D ships. It's it's a cool mechanic. Then we got the Tian Dong um, Heavy Industries. Uh, Tian Dong Heavy Industries is another mod faction. Uh, the cool mechanic about Tian Dong is they have the retrofitting, uh, retrofitting uh, yes feature or service. You can take certain types of ships and you can retrofit them to be Tian Dong ships. They have certain advantages and disadvantages uh, to the new schematic that simply add flavor to the game. The 10 speed you get from Null Space Conduits uh, can't really be compared to an SO. Uh, yeah, but the passive flux venting can be compared to an SO, wouldn't you say, Emil? Okay. Then we go to Tritachion. Uh, Tritachion is a mega corporation. Again, uh, they are considered, they're from the base game and they're considered to be the creators of the face technology and AI. Uh, they usually have energy weapons and high tech ships. Um, can I give you an advice or do you like to do all alone? Uh, yes, please give me advice. I'm okay with that. Uh, just try to not over backseat game you know if you have an advice in the situation that we're discussing go for it but don't tell me an advice that i'm going to be doing in the late game hey random advice when you have a colony please build this first do you see me do you see that i have a colony no then please wait to give me that advice when we get there make sense if you can give me an advice in the now all for it but don't give me random advice that I'm going to use sometime in the future. Okay. Uh, for pirates, everybody hates them. Everybody loves to hate them. They will sometimes be your main source of money. And that's it. Okay. And then you also have exploration missions, um, like analyze the direct or survey, stuff like that. Uh, okay. So that was the explanation of the Intel tab. You also have the Command tab. Over here, you're going to be managing your colonies. Um, you're going to be checking out your overall income per month, your doctrine and blueprints. Practically, um, how, uh, how will your faction fleets and your own fleet act? Um, so, for example, uh, this, is, this is the place where you can manually tell your ships to be more aggressive or more passive. Uh, in this case, I'd like to make the ships a little bit more aggressive. Like so, set them as a default more aggressive. You can also check blueprints over here. These are all of the ships, weapons, and fighters that we can produce at a colony if we have a heavy industry building built. Okay, and that's it. I have no idea what custom production stands for, though. There are a lot of pirate mods that are very good and add a lot of flavor. Um, as in pirate designs of ships solid. Usually when I see a pirate design, I, I only see a penalty, a debuff to pirate ships. I mean, have you seen the pirate version of a wolf? It sucks. Uh, is there a place where you see your bounty income? Or is it simply added without getting pointed out? Uh, as soon as you get, as soon as you kill your bounty target, you get paid. After each battle, um, if there was a bounty in the enemy, afterwards you get paid. 
a sum of money gets transferred directly to your bank account. Uh, custom production is the important bit. Uh, that's where you actually queue the ships to be built and to be used by your faction, right? Wolf is baseline trash, to be honest. Um, I always saw wolves to be uh, the type of ship that you use in wolf packs, literally with other wolves, and you just add some graviton beams on it with tack lasers in the rest of the slots. You just have quite a few of them, and on one of them, you add an ion cannon. On another one, you add a, I don't know, heavy, in, uh, heavy intensity pulse laser. You practically mix it up, and you just create this wolf back. Uh, yeah, usually are weaker, but in some mods, you get eco economic. Oh, practically, you get a downgraded version of the actual thing. But it's cheaper. You have less firepower, but a higher income if you use a fire ship as main. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of it for the interface. Uh, let's just end with this interface because it's pretty important. This is your money. This are your supplies and how many supplies you consume each day. Usually think of your supplies as food. In the market, you'll find food, but that's just a trade. That's just a trade uh, item. Supplies are your lifeline, your um, combat readiness to keep your ships functioning. Fire Falcon is one of the exceptions. That thing is better than the base variant. I'll have to look at one once we find it. Uh, further down, you'll see your fuel capacity. If this runs out while you're in hyperspace, you're going to be dungeon rings. Uh, over here, it's your burn level. Burn level is your speed outside of combat. This can go all the way up to here without having sustained burn active and it'll go all the way up here depending on your ships if you have sustained burn active which we'll talk about the abilities in a sec over here it's your fleet wide combat readiness um now we have already explained combat readiness over here it's your fleet wide armor um this also gets repaired over time over here you'll see Always have, yes, always have high CR. If you have low CR, it's usually a good idea to stay the fuck out of the battles. Over here, you'll be able to see uh, how much time you need to stay safe for the repairs to take place. And then over here, you have the sensor range. So how far can you see? And your sen on your detection, detection range, how far can others see you? And this can be modified based on where you are and if you have your transponder on. Okay, speaking of transponder, let's start talking about, real quick, about the abilities. Um, your transponder is your driver's license. It's They're your identification codes. If you have them on, everybody is going to know who you are, who you represent, and where you are. Having the transponder on will increase the uh, the distance at which you uh, others will see you it literally increases by 1,000 units hmm? by always on spare crew yes I know solid I know that one it's fine always have over the skeleton crew limit which we're going to talk ag again in a sec uh, that you'll be able to see that in the uh, inventory screen um Practically, when you have the transponder on, you want to be known, you want to be seen, and most factions, when you deal with them, will want you to have your transponder on. In in most factions, it's illegal to have your transponder off. If you have your transponder off, one of these attachments will chase you down, thinking that you're up to no good, and you'll receive a faction penalty. And a free scan. If they scan you and you have and you have uh, illegal goods on you, they're going to get confiscated, and it's going to be shitty, and it's going to be bad for everyone. When you want to smuggle stuff in a location, as in giant amounts of stuff smuggling, that's when you want you know, to have your transponder off. You want to have a very, very, very small detection range. You want to go dark. You want to be slow and stealthy, like a gat damn ninja a space pirate ninja all right um yeah i love going dark too i it's one of my favorite abilities i usually i use it to infiltrate 
pirate stations. Oh, also, you're always hostile to pirates. And, sorry, if you're hostile to a faction, if you manage to infiltrate the station of said faction, or the planet of said faction, while you're in a dark state, you know, while you have your transponder off, they'll not know who you are and they'll still do business with you. But if one of their defensive fleets sees you, uh, they'll know who you are, they'll refuse to do uh, work with you. That's the gist of it. And we're actually going to be using a, a Going Dark when we once we go near Garnier, because we'll want to get in some battles, get in some fights. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Nobody's a friend. You need to be very opportunistic in this game. Okay, what else do we got? Um, active sensor burst just increases the sight that you see. Uh, if you if you're in a in a system where you have no idea what's going on, or if you want to scout out what's around you, you will ha you just hit an active sensor burst. Uh, but beware, this is going to slow you down. It's going to stop your speed, and it's going to let everybody know that you did it. So most likely, some of these boys will come knocking. Or some of the pirates from from within the system will come knock and come searching to see who is uh, who's actively searching for stuff. Emergency burn. Uh, you literally, if you want to go fast and escape someone, you activate emergency burn. It will automatically give you high maneuverability and maximum burn speed for your fleet. Sustained burn does the same thing. But you don't have maneuverability. You're going to be going in a sustained state in a straight line, and it's going to be a little bit harder to steer. And usually when you're traveling, you're going to be having sustained burn on. Also, when you're running, you can use going dark in the asteroid field to have a bonus in stealth. Indeed. I know. That's all I do. You say that like every system contains stacks of pirates. No. No, not every system contains stacks of pirates. Sadly. I wish every system would contain stacks of pirates because it gives you stuff to kill. Uh, what else do we got? Scavenge. Literally, if you find scavenge, in sp uh, if you find something to scavenge in space, you're going to be using this. Um, siphon fuel, which is from a mod. If you're inside clouds of nebula, nebulas and stuff like that, you can siphon fuel. Uh, this is a trade. You practically give away your supplies for extra fuel. That's it. Uh, interdiction pulse. You practically fry the engines of everything around you uh, for. I think it's around seven or eight seconds, um, but it stops you in your tracks. So you kind of got to nail it. I, I never use Interdiction Pulse. I never use because I always sneakily catch my prey. Uh, follow me. If you're part of a faction, if you're commissioned, you know, you're, you're kind of a vassal of a faction, uh, you can use Follow Me to tell other fleets to follow you for a few hours. I'm not exactly sure if, I think it's a few days. Uh, but practically, when you need reinforcements to deal with something, you want to bring in the boys. Distress signal, which I recommend to never use. Never use this. It will get you into trouble more than getting you saved. Also, I understand that you should ignore distress signals. Uh, you're also going to be gaining other abilities based on the skills over here. For example, once we have navigation at the maximum, we're going to be able to transverse jump. Let me explain what that is. Uh, so currently, to get out of the system, we got to use the Jingala jump point. We got to get out utilizing a predetermined jump point to get out of the system. With transverse jumping, you can just get out of a system from wherever you want. It's very good to get in and get out of systems stealthily, and I feel like it's an essential skill to have on any character. Just any character. Unless you want to be a goody two shoes and never smuggle anything and always face tank any fleet that you're going to be seeing. But I do recommend to be strategic and stealthy. Okay, let's uh, start moving along. We're going to explain more shit as we go. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to explain, uh, over here you're going to be able to see, if you go into the inventory screen, you'll be able to see your cargo capacity, uh, the amount of crew that you can have, and the amount of crew required to uh, maintain uh, all of your ships operate, pardon, fully operational. In this case, I need 30 crew, 
Currently, we have 36, so all is good on that end. I could have sold that Swarmer. No, sorry, I'm, no, I'm going to sell it somewhere else. I'm probably going to keep the light auto cans for a little bit. Let's start moving. You can increase speed of time by holding the shift key. You can keep it... I, I usually just like to keep it on normal speed because uh, I like to watch things as I'm, as they unfold. On And I kind of like to pause stuff. Alien Super Weapon, thank you for becoming a follower of my dude. Welcome to Hit Point In. Okay, so we reached Asharu. This is a independent uh, planet. It's not part of any of the major factions. They kind of form... It's kind of the independent Worlds League. Uh, they're just neutral planets uh, that just don't participate in active politics. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of all I have on them. And usually they don't specialize into anything, and they have a little bit of everything. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to search for um, companions. You'll usually want to open the com directory, and you'll, you'll see over here mercenaries or officers or stuff like that. You'll also find administrators um, for hire. The administrators are used to, well, administer your colonies in case you don't want to do it yourself. Okay, let's take a shuttle to the bar. There's nothing going on at the bar. Let's go into the trade goods screen. Uh, what do we got here? Stabilized shields. Um, natural pla uh, neutral planets, free planets. Uh, there's no neutrality in space. Sure. I guess. I usually like to be on the friendly part with the independents because they give me um, they give me vroom vroom contracts. Um, trade contracts. What do we got here? A thumper, which I don't like. Uh, bongos, which as I understand, are some one of the best defensive weapons, point defense weapons in the game. Again, for those who don't know, point defense weapons are used against rockets and small fighters. A stitch gun, which is uh, useful against hull, horrible. The only thing that I don't like about bongos is it has a high ordnance cost, five for a defense weapon. Um, but still, still, its performance is very, very good. It's very powerful. It practically does AOE damage. A harpoon, MRM single, it's bad. Annihilator rocket pod. Um, stabilized shields reduces me out of f flux. A shield um, generates. So a shield will always generate a certain amount of flux when you keep it active. Um, but it's soft flux. If you right click, it's just going to dissipate again. Um, this is good on bigger ships. I don't want to buy it right now because we're not really doing good on cash. There's the Bongo full build, in which you go up close and shred. Oh my, yeah, shit. You go with, do you build a hammerhead with SO bon, full bongos and bongo drums on the front? Because that sounds stupid and insane at the same time. And fun, oh God, I gotta, I gotta try that out when I can. What do we got here? We got some luxury goods, some drugs, uh, some harvested organs, Oh wow, a Typhoon Reaper launcher. That's a medium missile. Nah, that, that thing's dangerous. That thing launches Reapers. And we found some Sabos. Uh, Sabo SRMs. Uh, it's practically the same Sabo that I have equipped on my ship, but they're three. They have a limited munition of three. Um, also to tell if a weapon has a um, munition limit. There are rare cases, but mo mostly missiles have limited ammo. You'll be able to see it over there on the bottom on the bottom side above the ancillary data. No flux cost to fire, but limited ammo three. So it's a direct upgrade to what we currently have. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, mining blasters, meh. Praxis rotary nailer. I haven't really tested out this weapon, but we don't have a medium slot, so I don't care. Volkite battery, uh, point defense weapon. Effectively, just a pair of volkites. Um, Excels at saturating an area with void bursts, rounds, shredding just about any missile attempting to pass through. So kind of a medium slot um, the point defense weapon. Thumpers are bad. Auto blasters. Okay, uh, the reason why thumpers are, bla are bad and bad at the same time, they're bad, is because they do fragmentation damage. Uh, these are a very good finisher weapon, but they do shit against shield and armor. They're very powerful against hull, direct hull damage. I never found thumpers to be good, so bleh. What else have we got? Auto blasters, sabos, Vulcan cannons are a good cheap point defense weapon. 
uh, Hammer Class, Swift, and ERPD lasers. What's an ERPD laser? Um, low cost PD laser. Okay. Uh, PD for, stands for point defense. All abbreviations mean something. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing at random set in there. Uh, SRM, short range missile. Um, what else do we get here? Something that has an abbreviation. No, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything else right now. Uh, what do we got here? Shield bypass. Nah, I don't like that. Expanded magazines, I don't usually use. Hmm? Increase the ammo capacity of the number of charges for ballistics and energy weapons by 50%. So if you have a weapon with limited ammo, that practically doubles the... No, no, it doesn't double. It uh, has a 50% increase to the ammo, exactly like it says. That's kind of good, but I don't usually use um, weapons like that. The PD laser is the best ordinance point efficiency as point defense. Okay, what about the um, long-range PD laser? Isn't that good as well? Converted hangar. Now, um, the converted hangar mod spec, you can put it on, I think, any ship. Let me see. Converts the ship's standard shuttle hangar to house a fighter bay. Provides manufacturing produced fighter chassis. Okay. Can, oh, no, no. It cannot be installed on frigates, phase ships, or ships that already have a proper fighter bay. My bad. Yeah. The long-range PD laser. Is it bad? Is it that bad? Aw, oh, come on. Is, what's wrong with it? Just super inefficient? Doesn't do enough damage to stop the missiles or something? I'm not an expert of this game. What I'm explaining is the base. The base, to my understanding. And I think I kind of stated it pretty well until now. So inefficient? Okay, I'll keep it in mind. I'll stay away from them from here and out. Uh, wasp. I, we, don't, we sadly don't have anything to equip these with, uh, so we don't care about that. But what we can do is check the production of this place. And they're currently producing food. Do they have a cheap price on food? Also, if you press F1, you're going to be able to see extra information on all of the trade goods. It The game literally tells you where you can buy it for cheap and where you can sell it for high. In this case, we can buy it for a minimum of 10 credits in Eventide Hegemony, which is in the Samara star system at a distance of 3.3 light years to the southeast. The only the only way uh, long-range PDs can work is when you mass them. I see. Okay. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Um, so practically, we can buy it for super cheap at Eventide, and we can sell it... At sadly, there's no there's no deficit, there's no demand for it anywhere. To be honest, I guess we could sell it at uh, the Hegemony and uh, Chico Motsok. Okay, um, just to explain, uh, this was confusing for me at first. What these locations mean? What's what's Sindria? What's Sindria Dictat? What's Esconia? Uh, Sindria is the name of the station or planet. Sindria Dictat is the faction that that station or planet is part of. And the star system is literally where in which star system is that lo that station or planet located in. Okay? Uh, just, it, at the beginning, you're going to get a little bit lost, but once you fly around a bit, you're going to get the hang of it. Okay, um, how much for the drugs? So I think I'm going to be using all means of making money. Um, okay, over here it's 193 for the drugs. Best place to buy it would be at Paddington in the Ursula star system. It's kind of far away though. Mm. Okay, I could buy it from Tritachion for 167. Actually, now that I look at it, that's Kind of a bad price for drugs in Quaras. This can go all the way up to 400. You love the Imperium? You know it's from a mod, but everyone has it. Uh, I kind of don't like the Imperium uh, ship designs, but I love their weapons. Their ship designs look kind of rudimentary and basic, but their their weapons are so fucking good. They're they're Daka. They're pure Daka. But we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, yeah, let's first of all 
sell this on the open market because we won't want it. Um, also, sometimes how and why, how will you choose if you want to sell it on the open market or on black market? It will depend on your profits. If you're interested in the profits, um, it will depend if you want to become more friendly with the faction. The more you trade and sell on the open market, you're going to passively receive an increase in relations with the faction. Um, you can also kind of balance it out, like trade on the open market and then train a little bit, trade a little bit on the black market, just to, just to you know, keep the suspicion levels on the low. Taxation is theft. That's eh, fine. I'm okay with it. Neutrino. Uh, neutrino is from a mod that I don't have, right? Pirate markets all the way. Yeah, I guess. You can also sell in the pirate markets. That's true. But sometimes you just want to unload shit. Uh, let's check the let's check the fleet screen. Let's see what we can buy from over here. Uh, Bento. Yeah, we can also talk a little bit about a type of ships that you're gonna be having. Uh, armored tanker, literally used for fuel. You're gonna be using this ship to transport a large cap to, to increase your capacity of fuel for your fleet. Civilian troop transport. You'll literally use this to to um have a high capacity of crew members on your fleet useful for when you want to colonize a planet or for where you simply want to survey salvage rig non-combat used strictly for salvaging operations will increase the amount of loot that you get from a salvage operation you make it as fast as possible and you do not use it in combat uh, what else do we got here? Freighters. Freighters literally used to carry goods around. You'll most likely want... Um, well, there are ships that combine the two. For example, the Shepard also has a salvage rig, but also has a decent amount of cargo capacity. I usually just get four Shepards in the beginning of the game, and then slowly phase the Shepards out and replace them with salvage with one or two salvage rigs uh, a giant freighter ship and a uh, tanker ship. Um, but those will be the support ships that you're never going to be utilizing in combat. They'll slightly slow you down, uh, but they're going to be essential for a long, for long haul um, missions and expeditions. Uh, the only salvage ship I need is the Infernus. I'll, I think the Infernus is a is a Legio schematic or pirate schematic i'll have to check that out uh, what do we got here um akintina modded demodded to hell so look at this look at this ship uh, sadly my face is over it but it has compromised hull increased maintenance misshaped turret gyros unreliable subsystems performance irregularities once you once you learn all of the terms you'll know each ship exactly each demod exactly what it does compromised hull less hull hp Increased maintenance. It costs you more supplies to keep it running on a daily basis. Usually increased maintenance is a deal breaker. A misshapen turret gyros. The turret speed the churn and turret speed of the ship is weaker, it's slower. So it's gonna be having problem with any faster ship than it. Unreliable subsystems. Um I think the unreliable system subsystems refer to the fact that the ship will run out of CR faster, I think. And I think you can keep it at maximum combat readiness as well. Performance irregularities, I think, just a all-time problem. Yeah, peak performance down. Um, skeleton crew required is increased. So, practically, this is demodded to hell. You can invest to unmod, sorry, to, to restore it and get rid of all of the demods off of a ship. But you'll do that in rare cases because it costs a fuck ton of money. It is better to buy a ship in mint condition rather than buy a ship in that's demodded to hell and then restore it. It's, it is uh, more financially sound. Okay, what else do we got? Do I have anything over here that I'm interested in? No, I don't. Let's see, on the black market, a kindling destroyer. I always wanted to try the Badger Heavy Heavy Tender. It's practically uh, the big the big sister of the Shepherd. Uh, guys, Emil, Solid, did you, you ever utilize this ship? 
Uh, let's see what what's the kindling has on it. It's too expensive, but I'm curious. A medium energy, one small missile, one small universal. So a, a small universal slot, you can equip anything on it, as long as it's small. Um, medium ballistics, and a fighter bay. Not bad. Not bad. The only salt. Okay. Uh, I. You don't have the virus ships pack, so you don't have the badger at all. How come, Emil? Why are you not utilizing the virus ship pack? You use it sometimes. Not a big fan, but it's okay. So it's got. It's kind of the poor man's. Uh, if you really want a salvage rig, that's gonna be in battle a bit as well. Okay. Okay. Get it. A tanker, a shade, which uh, these, the shade and the side have phase technology. If you see that um, black, that uh, gray line that's um, surrounded by a black outline, uh, that means it's a phase ship. It can go out of existence and shit. It's pretty cool. Wish I wish you could uh, have a, sim um, a simulation or try out option in the fleet screen. That would be nice. A uh, pinnacle. Small synergy, two medium energy, three small energy, eh, high tech. Junker gunboat, puddle jumper, custom free trade ship, okay. Yeah, test lighting, these things would be awesome. Hermes shuttle, shuttle, a kite, a pirate kite. Hmm. I have the money to buy it. Practically, the, the pirate kite is a, is a support ship. Do they, you always need to take into consideration what can you equip the ship with based on your inventory and what's on the planet. Um, you will, um, all ships that you buy with a few rare exceptions will come without weapons. So if I could grab this kite, which gives me one small ballistic and two small missiles, uh, what can I equip it with? Uh, it's two small missiles. Do they have harpoons here? Uh, there should be... Hey, let's check her. Welcome back at the end. There should be a greasy salesman trying to convince you to overpay for the ship. That'd be cool. Dumb. Interesting. But cool. Uh, they do have harpoons, but there's just one. Ah, uh, that's lame. Usually what I li like to do with kites, I just put salamanders on them and have them uh, a suppression long-range uh, ballistic weapon just to keep the enemy have its shields going at all times. Kites are incredibly fast, very, very hard to catch. Uh, I guess I could put the light auto cannon on it, but nah, I'm not looking. I'm not looking the weapons that they're currently in the shop, so I'm not gonna buy it. Sorry, Kate. Love you. Okay, we're gonna have to get out of here. Um, it's risky to go alone. But maybe we can get lucky. Maybe we can get lucky and find a few smaller pirate fleets that we can take on ourselves. Probably not, though. Also, we'll definitely need to go... I'm going to try to go dark and go inside the uh, pirate station. Let's see. No, no, no. Let's uh, get inside this place. We're going to go inside the asteroid belt. Whoa, 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 stop right there. Stop right there. Good. And now, since we're in, uh -huh, we're going to deactivate our transponder. We're dark now. This fleet cannot see us. You see that little uh, pulsating circle? That's If we go past that pulsating circle, they're going to be able to see us. Um, actually, let's follow that fleet. I think that fleet is going to get in a battle. Oh, shit. Uh, what are we looking at? Uh, kite. Okay, so that guy is incredibly fastly going towards us to attack us. I'm probably going to lose, but I want to duke it out. Let's go on an interception course. I did save. So, pre-combat screen. The prior fleet maneuvers to prevent you from disengaging easily. It's aware of your identity due to your ship's transponder being turned on. The ships in Casey Olympus's fleet are known for having the following traits. Uh, the crew's determined, so 45% peak performance time. Wow, that is huge. Skilled and engineers, 45% repair rate. Um, that's a mod. This is the legendary mod. 
um, that simply provides you with uh, individual stuff for your crewmates and your ships. You can either give you buffs or debuffs. Open comm link. Uh, the open comm link crackles after a moment. Casey Olympus speaks. Wait, somebody actually answers this thing? Um, I'm not really sure what to say. Usually they just fight or run. So which is it? This gives us information on the dude. His name is Casey Olympus. He's rank captain. We're going to cut the comms. And now we are either going to move into engage or attempt to disengage. Uh, these are two types of battles. When you move into engage, you will fight. Your ships will come from the bottom side and you will engage. And if you want to retreat, you go back down. When you disengage, you are looking to run away from the enemy. You're going to be getting into a chase scenario where you come from the bottom side and you have to race to the top and retreat. And that way you will outrun and get away from your enemy. The enemy will be able to spawn from the bottom, left, and right. Okay, uh, let's move into engage. Transfer command. Oh my god, I forgot to equip... Son of a bitch. I forgot to equip the... Um, triple Sabos. So we're just going to have to work with one Sabo. That's going to be fun. Okay, the enemy's coming for us. I'm going to try to get in on a side. That kite is equipped with... Swarmers and Harpoons. We're going to try to outmaneuver. And take these guys one at a time. There we go. Retreat, let us vent, focus on the kite now, before his friend comes back. Stay on its toes. The combat can be very, very fast-faced, but once you have capital ships and stuff, it is going to slow down significantly. Good. Get away from that. Get away from the Cerberus. There we go. Now we can fight. Um, as you can see, this is a, I think it's a Cerberus, right? I think that's the name of it. A Hound. No, no, no. This is a Hound. This is a pirate ship of unique design. Uh, this Hound does not have shield generators. But what it does have is ha it has very, very high armor. Uh, I recommend against using shieldless ships because they're vulnerable to ion damage. Practically, we're literally disabling its weapons right now. Oh, it's trying to get away. We're not going to let it. We have SO. We can outrun it. We can outrun most ships. Yeah, it is going for... I can I can tag that hit. Please hit. Actually, can you go for the Sabo shot? There we go. We're trying to take out its engines, and it goes with a flame out. Flame out means it can no longer... Uh, utilize its engines. The only thing that it has for it is currently the momentum, and it just drifts through space until they reactivate their uh, their weaponry, their weaponry, their engines. And there we go. We fought one against three. Okay. Um, over here, it's going to show you the results. Um, which ships were deployed? Which ships retreated? Uh, which ships got disabled or destroyed on both sides, on your side and then on the enemy side. Now we can consider to recover some ships. In this case, it's the kite. It has structural damage, so uh, less hull HP. I think it's less... Actually, if we F1 it, we'll see exactly what problems it has. Structural damage, non-compliant gunnery core, and unreliable, unreliable subsystems. Uh, peak performance goes down. Uh, sensor profile and sensor strength, that goes down because it's a, a civilian hull. Hull integrity goes down. Armor rating goes down. Shield flux um, damage goes... Yeah, shield flux goes up. Hey, Tolly Rex, welcome back to the end, dude. Doing fine. Playing some Star Sector. Hmm, not a lot of people showing up for Star Sector. Well... What you gonna do? I'm not gonna be grabbing any. I'm not not gonna be grabbing the, the kite. It has some D mods that I just don't want to go for. We receive a decrease in relations with the pirates. We're already hostile with them. We receive 401 credits, and now we can pick through the wreckages. Um, one question that a lot of people ask: 
is it worth it to um, recover the ship and sell it? No, it is not worth it because to recover the ship, you need to invest supplies in it. So it's just better to scrap it and move on. Okay, so we got supplies, fuel, two crewmen, two heavy machinery, uh, 31 metals, which is kind of the trash, trash loot that usually you're not going to be making a lot of profit on. We got a high value prisoner. Uh, this is one of the prisoners that I've mentioned that can be sold for either a profit or for a reputation hit, a uh, reputation increase. Uh, and lighter to rocket pod, a bullpup auto cannon from the Exodus initiative. A uh, bullpup is a good replacement for the light assault cannon that we have on our ship. You can refit your ship in space, but it's a bad idea. Your combat readiness will go down severely, and it's going to take a long time for it to go back up. Always refit your ships in a station or on a planet. It's not a casual. It's not a casual game at all, Tolier X. You really have to read it, and um, read and study and get accustomed to the game. Do a lot of trial and error. My God, I read the entire Wikipedia, all of the guides. Um, I've also read the entirety of the Codex, with the mods included. Hooey. And I still don't know half of the things that are in this game. Because I simply don't remember. Ah. Okay, we got a monogram railgun. That is a long-range suppression weapon. It's practically going to force the enemy to keep its shields on. I like to equip kites with the monogram railgun. I'm going to press R, and we are way, way over capacity. What happens when you're way over the capacity? You're going to be going through supplies much, much quicker. Uh, same for fuel. If you have over capacity for fuel, you're going to be eating through supplies much, much quicker. As you see, our supply consumption per day shot up significantly. So what, we, what it means, we're going to have to eject into space uh, certain equipment, certain stuff that we don't need. For example, I don't want the United Rocket Pod. I'm going to sell that and get rid of one supply that should be fine and then for fuel we're just going to get rid of 14 units so we can have the maximum amount uh to reach the maximum amount you just control and click on the stuff you know if you want to individually select one unit you hold shift and click and shift and right click puts them back in that would be the idea you like that it's a rewarding feeling getting more knowledge and getting better yes that is true that is true. I do feel much better now that I know what the fuck I'm slightly doing. Even though most of the time I still have the feeling that I have no idea what the fuck I'm slightly doing. Okay, um, so what do we get from that battle? Uh, we gained 9.4 experience. We've advanced two levels because it was a big battle. We have two character points to spend. We have a battle report. What happened against those pirates? Um, and this is part of the Legends mod. In this case, we've gained a new passive. Our ship, the HPI Harpoon, has gained a reputation for being durable. We've increased our hull integrity. And you can also verify that on the refit screen by mousing over Notable. Over here, it's going to show you the passive that you gained from the legendary mod. Uh, it has a rating. Okay, uh, let's see. Durability, 10% whole integrity increase so literally our hp went up the hp for the ship went up which is awesome okay let's go into the uh what what other information okay no other information let's go into the character screen uh this will bump us up to lesser fuel consumption and level three technology these over here don't provide you with any benefits They're just there to unlock higher tiers of perks. Okay, that's gonna be it for that. These guys should go boom. My fleet consumption has just gone up, why? Most likely fleet consumption went up because we're trying to recover. Uh, yeah, we're good on that. Uh, we're trying to recover um, combat readiness. 
Okay, since we went on this battle, we are going to be going away. Uh, there's already a pursuit fleet coming with us, uh, after us. We don't want to fight those guys. Because um, I'm going to try to go back to Jingala. We don't want to fight those guys because there would be no point of us fighting them. We can't loot their stuff. Uh, because we just don't have enough space anymore. And we're also... Mm, I, can take, I can take on that fleet, but we're still risking it for nothing. So we're going to try to... Oh! Emergency bird! Ah! Son of a bitch! Never mind! It wasn't fast enough. It's lame. It's very lame. Okay, well, at least we're going to get an extra level if we win this. Um, but we're not going to be getting in any of the loot. What we can also do is we can just return here after we just dump everything at the station in Jingala. We can just return here and get back the rest of the loot. It's an option. These ejected cargo pods will remain here until you get back and take them. I'm not exactly sure if the AI uh, goes and grabs them, to be honest. Can you be in factions or play as a pirate and mercenary? Yes, you can, Dolder X. You can join any faction as long as you have positive relations with them. Including the pirates. Okay, uh, continue. Let's get in there. Let's fight it up. We gotta be fast about it. Okay, you need to go down. Ah, they're kind of close. Whew, that's a lot of rockets. Okay, let's deal with the, the little boy first. Hey, he has a monorail. Whoop. Yeah, hey, gotta, 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 gotta move a bit. There we go. We gotta stay in close. Mimic its movement until it goes down. No need, no need to focus down the big boys, just beat the small fries up first. No! Shit, he's getting away. Oh, risky, risky, risky. There we go, and now get out. Safe distance. Vent. Good, and now deal with the other small fry. And we're, then we're gonna deal with the big guy afterwards. He's gonna run out of missiles eventually. We just need to maintain this dude between me. Yeah, our combat readiness is already going down. We want to finish this battle as fast as possible. Come on. Go down already, you old shit. There we go. Good. Now we can deal with the final target. Stay in front, dampen field, just a vent, and keep shooting. There we go. Just take it out. Press balloons, deactivate it. Good, stay in its face, stay in its face. We have the staying power. Another damper field, stay on it. And it's gone. That's it. Also, um, I do have to mention, this is harder than it looks. I'm not gonna lie, you, you need practice. You need to practice a bit. Um, Phoenix Predator. Predator X Class Assault Frigate. Oh my god, it's demoted to hell. Uh, degraded engines, glitch sensor array, impaired life support, unreliable subsystems, non -com Oh my good god, we're not grabbing that. Sometimes you'll want to grab a ship just to have the extra cargo capacity to take your stuff and take the loot back. Uh, but this is a combat ship. What's its cargo pack capacity? 30? It ain't gonna help us here. So let's just continue. Pick through the wreckage. Uh, we found 50 supplies, one... I'd like to... Okay, I can grab that. That's awesome. That's it. Uh, that's going to stay in there. Continue. Gain a another level. 
We received the system bounty, so we are getting paid for killing these pirates. Uh, we've uh, received 4.9k for that fight, and we've improved our reputation with the hegemony for with, by three. So that's awesome. I might need to save. Uh, you can quickly save by pressing the F5 key. Okay, that's going to remain here, and we got to fucking run. Some of your ships have low combat readiness. Yeah, 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 go, 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 go. Go, bruh. Go. We gotta run. <laughs> yeah. All right. And now we have level three. Navigation plus one maximum burn level. I think we're already at burn level maximum right now. I gotta have to check. Um, we, we practically, if you want to have the maximum amount of speed on the world map, you want to have burn level 10. Currently, we have burn level 10, so we have the maximum speed of 20. No fucks given. And we're back in Jagala. Okay, first order of business, repair. Trade goods. And do we want to stay buddy-buddy with these guys, or do we want to sell on the black market? We currently have our transponder on, so most likely we'll need to sell on the open market for right now. Um... Hmm. I kind of don't want to sell anything. I'll, I'll sell four of these. Just to have five heavy machine. Actually, no. Keep the heavy machinery because it's going to be useful for scavenging. I would like to uh, get rid of the high value prisoner. What we what we run what we want right now is money. Um, so we're just going to go with special functions, prisoner action, and now we can um, repatriate the prisoner. And this is going to release the prisoner for a reputation boost with the hegemony, or collect ransom, which is going to give us 4.6k. Really? Just 4.6? How much would he be if I would sell him on the market? Oh, one. Well, clearly we're going to be grabbing that bounty. Never mind. Collect ransom, please. Okay. Uh, let's see, um, the ships in the buying section always, um, rotate at the end of the month. At each end of the month, there's gonna be, uh, new supplies, new ships over here. Uh, oh, that brawler. Oh, that Tarsus. Oh my god, I'm gonna buy, I'm, I think I'm gonna buy that Tarsus. Tarsus is a freighter, it would simply increase everything. It would increase our inventory capacity, which we desperately need. Is it too expensive to go for right now? Should I just focus a little bit on the freighters? Not on the freighters, on the frigates. On combat frigates, to be exact. Hmm. Have more and more of the feeling that this is a mountain blade in space? It is mountain blade in space. Pillar Rex. It's literally mountain blade in space. That carrier would be awesome, but it's kind of too big and high maintenance for right now, and I can't defend it. That's the problem with that condor. I can't defend it right now with what ships I have. Um, ba -ba -bum. I can grab the vigilance, but I I don't like the vigilance. Uh, the problem with the village vigilance is it's very very uh, susceptible to dying to small fighters. Hey Sirius, welcome to the end. So the combat system is far superior. Ish superior? Yes, it's more complex. More complex, more strategies to think of um, than Warband, that's for sure. But I think they Mountain Blade in general. And I don't really have anything to equip it with, so... Mm -mm. I could have put a point defense weapon on it. Mm, are there point, are medium energy point defense weapons out there? Hmm. Nah. Nah, nah. What what does that kite have? Uh, compromised hull. So if somebody spits in the general direction of that kite, it's gonna die. I I think I'm gonna buy the Tarsus. So the Tarsus is a freighter ship that is not for combat. This has four small ballistics on it just to defend itself. Not for combat at all. It is a civilian grade ship, so we're gonna have to modify it a little bit but we're literally grabbing it for the inventory capacity. 
Uh, no, just humans. Not really aliens in the game. There's no, actually, there's there's no marriage system in the game. Thought Rex. Let's grab that. I, I think I'm making a mistake grabbing the ship. Uh, but let's go for it. Okay, uh, let's get a name for the ship from Discord. Let's see. Um, Pandemonian, Titan, Rhino. I might call it a Rhino. Um, Waning Day. Right. Uh, Imperator Chariot. Light of the Emperor. Uh, probably gonna go Rhino on it. Simple name. Uh, if you guys want to suggest uh, names for the ships, please go on my Discord channel. You can type in exclamation point Discord in the chat, and you can go on Discord channel. There's a Star Sector ship names section where you can suggest names. You don't have to be you, you don't have to be a follower or a subscriber. Anybody can go and add names. The only difference is I simply select what I like out of the mix. Okay, so it's gonna be the HPI Rhino. Okay. And we're gonna call it the loot freighter. There we go. Um, let's see what's the auto fit for this. Usually just four light machine guns and a civilian grade hull. Really, they don't remove that. Interesting. Let's see. I I don't want civilian grade hull. Increases sensor profile by 100 and reduces sensor strength by 50. That means we can stealth our way through stuff. So I'm going to go militarize subsystems, which is going to get rid of all of the debuffs from civilian grade. It's going to increase its maximum speed by 1. And uh, it's going to increase, it's going to double the amount of crew that's required to man it. Also, uh, each month you have to pay your crewmen. You have to pay your boys money. You don't pay your ships, you pay your crew. Uh, let's see, what's the current maximum burn 9? Um, I don't think there's a way for me to further improve its speed right now. Multiple injectors, does that increase? No, no, that doesn't increase its, its maximum speed. Neither does safety overrides. Okay, well, if I can't uh, increase its maximum speed, I'm just going to go with expanded cargo halt. Cargo hold, it's gonna give it even more carrying capacity. Uh, for civilian grade holds, also increases maintenance, maintenance supplies by 50%. Uh, let me check that. Th does it increase it even though I have multiple subsystems? Uh, maintenance of supplies three per month. If I go expanded cargo holds, no, it still remains at three per month. Cool. Cool, so it does neutralize everything on that civilian grade. Uh, what else do we got? Reinforced bulkhead. Actually, no, let's put let's put some some weapons on it, baby. What do we got? Uh, yeah. yeah, light machine guns. To add, this is a cool tip that really helped me out. To add the same weapon on the next slot, you just shift click, and it's gonna add uh, what you selected before. Okay, let's set the weapon groups. I mean, it's just one weapon group, and go for. We don't want venting. On this ship, we want capacitators as many capacitors as possible. Uh, is there is there space to add anything else interesting? Uh, no. You usually want reinforced bulkhead as well, but in theory, this ship should never see combat unless we decide to run. Um, so for right now, I'm gonna risk it and just not give it reinforced bulkhead. Uh, no, 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 no. Nah, no reinforced bulkhead. There. Okay, so we got a new ship. The HPI Rhino. Oh, right. Uh, there's also another thing that I want to do. I want to replace this light assault gun and add the bullpup autocannon. Hey, Martin. Welcome back to the end, dude. Enjoy some Star Sector. That means we got to bring down one vent to have enough ordinance points to add the bullpup. There we go. Uh, but it's no problem. I think the light assault cannon produces more flux. So the fact that we've added this weapon is kind of the same thing. It's awesome. Uh, should I downgrade the Vulcan cannons as well and just add... Nah. 
No, nah, there's no the machine guns here. Also, what you can do is just add rail um, monorails to this, monogram rail guns to this, just full monogram rail guns, and you will disable shields super fast. But you're not going to be able to uh, destroy their armor, so keep that in mind. Uh, weapon group. Okay, let's uh, test this out in battle real quick. Bring in the Lasher. I know. I know that the Lasher is a boring enemy. But it's, as I said, a good indicator if your ship can hold its own in battle. Think of it like the bo a boss frigate. Whew. Holy shit, that saved my behind so well. Oh, that was good reaction time. Damn. I just tanked most of its harpoons. It still has a few. No, it activated its uh, ammo feeder. And now fight it. There we go. Disable all of its ships. And now just fire it out of the sky. Mm. Wrong turn. Keep it offline with the ion cannon, and it is going down. Yeah. Yeah, this design will do just fine. Didn't really see an increase in damage from that bullpup, but should be okay. Hey, Warzoth, welcome back to the Indeed. Can you have a shield to destroy your ship as AI companion in your own ship is for full hull armor damage? Uh, yes. You can, but the AI is very unreliable. Um, usually it's unreliable. You're not going to be able to order the dude to exactly attack what you're attacking. Most of the time, you'll want a mix of both worlds on most ships. Rarely you're going to be getting a build where you have uh, simply anti-armor dedicated weapons. There are few weapons that can handle shield, both shields and armor, and the Imperium has those. Okay, um, no railgun here, right? And we only have one mon monogram. Yeah. Okay, um, do you guys have any sabos? No, I need to go grab the sabos from the other other location. Uh, for right now, what do I want to sell? I'll keep the light assault gun for a bit. Probably gonna sell it eventually. Also, wow, we need to up our crew by a lot. We only have 38 dudes. Uh, to know if you have less crew, you either see it in the inventory screen or you see it over here. It's going to say crew under strength. Yeah, we just jumped. Okay, let's grab from the open market 60 boys, 70 boys. We're going to pay for that 3,400. I'm okay with that. Okay. Let's repair our ships. Oh, we also need to buy some supplies. I'm gonna buy the supplies from the black market. I don't. I'm sure they're not gonna mind. We bought quite a few stuff from the from the open market, so they'll be okay. There we go. That should keep us going for a while longer. We've just jumped our cargo capacity to four hundred fucking forty which is awesome. We don't need fuel right now uh, because we are staying in the system for a while longer. Let us go. Quick save. Remember to quick save in this game. It's one of the things that I really, really recommend that you get into the habit of doing. Always, also we're going back there where we left that cargo. Always quick save because uh, you're going to be getting surprised a lot. Also, I'd like to get out of range of everyone and turn off my transponder so we so we can stealthily acquire those uh, those supplies. There we go. Okay. So, let's see. Oh shit. Go 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 run. Whoo! What is that? Oh, I can take it out. I can take it on. Yeah, so what happened there is 
they knew a ship, a fleet was coming, and then its transponder went off. So they couldn't see the fleet anymore. The AI came in to investigate. The pirates came in to investigate to see what was going on. I was, I think I forgot to go dark. I just deactivated my transponder. Uh, no, you don't use fuel in, as you stay in your system. Uh, you use fuel if you transverse jump, or I think I think you use some fuse, uh, fuel if you emergency emergency run as well. Uh, continue. We're going to deploy this ship, and only that ship. The Rhino is not combat capable. So let's go and try to kick, it, kick their ass. You only use fuel when traveling between star systems. There's a Ren... Is that a, that's a sidecar? Let's try to take this out first if we can. Is that a light needler on it? Oh, that's a good sounding DACA weapon. A muscle. I can't I can't I can't receive sustained fire from both of those guys. Let's catch up to that dude. Oh my god, that dude's almost dead. Fuck it. Let's go get him. Hold fire so we can have maximum speed. Ah, you're not getting away, fucker. Ah, this is disgusting me time. He's gonna get away, isn't he? Is that a rocket? Holy shit! Come on, you bastard. Yes, the AI will retreat. And come on. Please. Uh-oh. And they're out of there. God damn it. Wasted so much time uh catching up to that guy. Let's try to kill these guys before I before I die. Good, good. Take it out, take it out, take it out. Before we run out of combat. And now it's the sidecar's turn. Should go fast super quick. Yes. We deactivated everything on that. There we go. So we keep so we keep on deactivating it. It's it's such a small target, it's hard to hit it. Lay him out. Come on. There we go. Oh, I'm so sad. So sad that that dude managed to escape. I'm gonna have to do I pursue him? My combat readiness is not that good. Oh, what? It's a mud skipper. Might have some good shit in it. I guess it's a no. It's a mud skipper MK2. It's a, it's been modified for battle. A mud skipper is a freighter ship, or is either a freighter ship or a personal car personnel carrier carrier. Um, give it a shot. Take a man of the action. Let's try to to nab it. Uh, from down below. Let's get it. We are getting closer. Slowly, slowly getting closer. So that's good. We gotta get in as close as possible without firing anything. And now go go full DACA on its ass. There you go. That's all we needed to do. All we needed to do. Wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, consider ship recovery. The Ren would be great. Um, but it's just... Let's see. Non-compliant gunnery core. Unreliable subsystems. Inoperative automated system and degraded engines. Ah, the degraded engines are a... 
are a deal breaker. Sidecar's shit. No point. Pick through. Uh, take all of that stuff now. Yeah. Take all of that stuff. Oh boy. Go, go, go. Oh god. What? It, what's this? Uh, Cerberus of Ren and a Red Arrow. Hmm? Yes. Yes, um, 13 euro, but it's not on Steam. You have to buy it from, uh, the dude's website. Let's level up. Let's get ourselves gunnery implants, I think. I'm gonna increase this to the max. Oh, uh, man. Hmm? What's it doing? Pursuing my fleet. Oh, never mind. What? Sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I've turned the transponder on. Thank you. God damn it. And that's what happens if they catch you with your transponder off. I'm looking for the cargo that we lost. Was it around here? No, that's a that's a fleet. What's our combat readiness? Okay, combat readiness pretty high. Go for it. I don't care. We're gonna kick ass. Should be able to kiss a guy. Kick ass at least. Uh, yes. Um, y as y as you can see, you can solo stuff, but just ships that you're super comfortable with, um, are useful for soloing. For example, there are other two ships that you could start off with: the Groundhog and the Alistair. I did not get a good f a good vibe from the neither of those two ships. They're both energy weapon oriented. Uh, well. The Groundhog more than the Alistairs, but I just couldn't make them work for me to be combat-capable stuff. Oh, Tempest is sex, Ritsunsuki. Welcome to the end. The Tempest is awesome, but... <sighs> well, it's kind of difficult to find Tempest in a world where there's so many ships. Okay, let's... Uh, sure, I'll take on the Ren first. Really, that little thing started firing. Whoop. All right, little shit. Let's dance. And oh my god, seriously? No, get it. <laughs> I would have been so pissed if it managed to get away. And now it's time to take out the temp the run. By the way, I consider the Ren to be a baby Tempest, to be honest. But just subpar. Come on, good. And now we finally got to deal with the Cerberus. Okay, Serby. Whoa there, bruh. bruh, bruh. Oh, really? It's a Cerberus with a shield? Or is that not a Cerberus? Oh, shit. We're, we're dying. I, there's no time to discuss what it is. There you go. That's what a Sabo does, just overloads shields like it's nobody's business. Hmm? You can play the game vanilla, but I... There's not going to be a lot of factions. There's not going to be a lot of ships. Then there's going to be some quality of life features that you're not going to be a part of. That's all. Not a lot of weapons. Just to get that flex out, baby. And time to say goodbye. Done. <sighs> Fast fights. Fast fights. Yes, Martin, I'm glad that you convinced me to mod the game. So it's recommended to play with this mod list over vanilla? It's recommended to... Yes. Yes, Pirate Eagle. I would say it's recommended to play modded version of the game. Uh, there is a main website on 
uh, the developers um, there's on the forums of the developers game uh, you'll be able to find a index with all of the mods available for the game well the mods that are worth mentioning let's go with that um, and you can just in easily install them from there you can easily install the mod by um, downloading the mod and then uh, putting it in the mod folder in the game directory that's it and then you activate the mod from the launcher of the game right let's pick through the wreckages nice a monogram and a bullpup cannon now we have a choice do we get rid of um oh also the mod list that i'm using is from another streamer at slash youtuber uh called nemo captain nemo um he has a very good balanced mod list i literally copied that from him uh, so the credit goes from him. It's a good balanced mod list in the sense that it provides a lot of a uh, lot of uh, factions and it keeps the game immersive, and in the same style. And yes, many mods make it into the base game simply because the developers keep an eye on them and they find them cool. Uh, two monorail monogram railguns are ready to be taken. That's cool. Destroy that dude. More money. Suddenly not a lot of loot. Oh, shit. Go. What? Ah. Pfft. Pfft. Sure, mate. Sure. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay against those little guys. And I think they're two red arrows. That is a... Brightwing. Meh. No? No, it's a fox. It's a fox. It's not a bright one. Okay, fox. Time to go. Bye-bye. Oh, shit. That's, that's a salamander. Ah. Ah, oh, shit. No, it's getting away. You ain't getting away, bruh. You gotta go. Keep the DACA up. There we go. Ah, shit. That salamander deactivated my left side. We're gonna stay away from it until my left side comes back online. There we go. It's back online. You saw the little notification. And now take it out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's done. Oh, it wasn't even a red arrow. It was a spade. So... Same thing. Um, do I want the fox? Degraded engine, structural damage, faulty power grid. Pfft, nope. No, thank you. A stitch gun, which is useless, but I'm going to sell it for a quick buck. We leveled up as well. We got lucky, to be honest. We got super lucky with the amount of fleets that we were getting with small fries. Usually a big, big pirate fleet will come in and just wreak havoc and destroy your soul. That can happen. Oh, also, what happens if you get your fleet destroyed? Uh, you receive a ship that's half its price. But I think you'll usually always, um, when you don't have a big big fleet, you'll always receive a, a wayfarer. I think. Hopefully, it's a wayfarer. I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay, next up, 100% target leading accuracy for auto-firing weapons. I really love to let my weapons auto-fire for me. Most of the weapons. Usually I'll main the main I'll main the main gun. But this is going to be incredibly useful in keeping um firepower firepower on the enemy's ass. Good. Let's see. Where did those... There's a possibility that uh, the cargo pods that we lost have been uh, secured by somebody else. Yeah, I seem to be lost. I seem to have lost them. Most likely somebody al already, already looted them. Let's go through here. We're not stealthy right now. We are full blown exposing our exposing our asses. Uh, we're probably gonna go back to Jungala. With sustained burn, go 
go, go. Is there or will there be multiplayer? I know that there are tournaments. I know that there are tournaments. They're practically fights. 1v1s. With each one with uh, its own built fleet. I'm not sure if it's in vanilla multiplayer. Ah, okay, there it is. Co-op multiplayer mod. Wait a second. Co-op multiplayer, as in you can play co-op and single player? Problem like official? Welcome to the end. That's awesome. Oh, it's local multiplayer. That still can work. Can you can you run it with a controller or something? Approach the guarded man and take a seat at his table. I'll I'll check what that is in a second. The caballero is a piece of shit. Which I'm gonna explain in a second as well. The Cabal is a minor faction of high-tech thieves. And that's always cause problems. Let's go with that. Okay, I'd like to sell this on... Okay, that's a horrible price. 12 for metal. Show me a better location to sell this, please. Uh, Cerberus or Scorn. Scorn's a hostile. Nah, it's not worth traveling that far. Press the control of a ship of yours, like in Warband Multiplayer Mod. Yep, pretty much. Still in your axe. Let go bye bye. I can stay. The monorails can stay. Uh, do you guys have monorails here? Monograms. Monogram rail guns. I, I call them monorails. I know it's wrong, but it's so right. Uh, Swift SRM launcher. Actually, no. Abort? I might be able to sell that better at the independent world to the south. We'll chest that out. Chest. Test. No, can stay, can stay. Stitch can, can go. Um, I'll go up to 15 heavy machinery. That should be fine. Oh, what? I can check out the hegemony military now? What's my relation with these guys? Uh, the Atlantic Profile, Hedgy. No, that's not how I check. Where? Map, maybe? Intel. Planets, Factions. Ah, there it is. Okay, we're currently at favorable with the Hegemony. That's great. That gives us access to their uh, basic military hardware. What do we got here? Hammer Barrage. Oh yeah, you can get to some pretty big and heavy weapons in here. Also, this is a... Um, heavy armaments are... Are they used for um, invading planets? I'm not 100% sure. But as I understand, they're just trade goods. And an Anaximander MRM launcher. That would be cool. As many rockets as you want. Mining blaster, Menacore cannon. Degraded particle streamer, meh. Um, guess it has a lot of machine goods in the area. Ah, once we get some rep, we're going to be able to get this good stuff. Ah, blacksmith MRMs are meh. Oh god, that is the love. That is what I want so badly. Integrated targeting unit. Extends the range of ballistic and energy weapons by... Mm. Cannot work in conjuncture with dedicated. I don't care. Uh, some mods let you use them in invasions or to restabilize revolting, revolting planets. Cool. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. Whoa there, Nelly. Did they... Did the month end and they switched weapons? I think they did. Purple Milk, Milk Official, thank you for becoming a follower, my dude. Welcome to Hit Point Inn. Ultra Auto Kin, Auto Pulse Laser. This is a very, very powerful weapon, but also super flux hungry. But this this is practically the laser DACA. High intensity laser isn't that impressive. Okay, man, thanks. Lightning gun, horrible, versus shields, but pride destructive against hull and armor. Uh, or is it just for hull? Long range tactical weapon that trains flux efficiency for unmatched accuracy. Cannot be dodged. 
It says general, but I didn't really see it do very good against um, do very good against shields. I wasn't auto pulse, not flux hungry, but charge limited auto pulse. Um, yes, it. Well, it's still a little bit of flux hungry. I mean, it's still a one thousand two hundred and fifty sustained fire. Uh, 250 per round, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, it does have a limited amount of ammo, but it recharges the ammo. So practically, it has a strong alpha strike, and then you wait for it to recharge it up. So, very, very destructive on a Sunder, for example. Which is, I think, one of the most famously player-manned uh, destroyer ships. Everybody likes a good Sunder. Not as bad as the plasma cannon. Um, are you referring to the lightning gun purple milk, or did you switch to the conversation about the auto pulse laser or the high intensity laser? But yeah, I think they restocked. If they restocked, that means they might have new ships for us. Let's see. We don't really have that much. Nope. Never mind. Oh, right. These are some of the bigger ships that you can get in the game. Capital class big boys. How would you describe the Tritachion faction? Tritachion, a mega corporation uh, with high tech ships, a lot of energy weapons. Uh, they are, as I understand it, quite evil. And they are known to be the creators of AI technology. And they will be fine with, uh, with you carrying AI. For them. Also, I think they give you the most money for uh, delivering AI. It's the one that shoots a burst of three like plasma projectiles? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, what's wrong with it? Oh, thing is sort of flux. Oh, right, we were talking about flux-hungry weapons. I understand. Yeah, some of the big boys are here. A tremor. Is that kind of like a hammerhead? Realmanth. Hmm. 300% bounty value for AI cores at Tritachion Worlds. Amazing. Uh, they don't care about, if you don't care about rep and you just want to, want to go for the money, then yeah, you if you find an AI core and you don't need it for your own personal gains, you bring that puppy to, to Tritachion. Uh, I don't think I have the mod. So, this Starliner is kind of meh on its own. Um, it, this is the biggest ship that you can utilize to carry out around troops. There is a modification to the Starliner called the Deep... The Deep Tide, I think it's called. Oh, no, or High Tide. Either Deep Tide or High Tide, which is just an insanely stupid missile boat. Um, just has all of the goddamn missile slots on it, and you can use it as a missile boat. It's amazing. But I don't know in which game it is. Uh, Tritachion produces the strongest and also most expensive to run ships, at least in the base game. Uh, yeah, as I said, they have high-tech ships. Hey, I can buy a rock hound from the goddamn hegemony military. That is bullshit. We really want to get get that stuff up. Never found a Foca yet useful. Okay, let's see what do we got here. Vigilance, meh. Scrap a frigate. I need I need some uh, some DACA, to be honest. Uh, let's see what this dude wants. Approach the guarded man. Um, approach the guarded man and take a seat at his table. He sticks his hands out, which you shake in a business-like manner. The man introduces himself as Fire Angela. When you exchange greetings, it seems my intuition was correct, Captain Fiddlebottom. You are just the man we needed. He says, smiling broadly. You give him a look of suspicion to which he responds, You're not in any trouble, Captain. I'm with the International Bounty Board, IBB for short, an organization com compri uh, comprised of officers sponsored by the Hegemony, the Independence, and the Persian League, the Imperium, the Shadow Army Construction Authority, Tian Dong, and the Alliance. We track a number of dangerous individuals throughout the sector, and when they get out of hand, he tips his head respectively, that's where you come in. You express incre incredul incredulity uh, to the IBB agent, who scoffs and puts his hands out in a placating gesture. You'll be rewarded, of course, he 
He reassures you before leaning in and whispering, and you'll have a shot at some rather unique ships. So practically this dude is going to give us a unique bounty that will go out and hunt down for a lot of money and some interesting ships. You want to try your first single frigate start? Can you recommend me an interesting starting faction with an extra land? Uh, Tian Dong's awesome. Um, who else? Um, Diablo Avionics. Um, any other interesting stuff? Um, who, who are the French guys? They have some awesome weapons. Oh, Imperium. Imperium has some amazing weapons. Uh, but yeah, you'll have to add them through the mod. Sorry. I've been playing Diablo Avionics, and you always have like 300 plus crew lost per battle because the Wenzers each hold like 5 pilots for some reason. Whack. Align with the Lodic Path? No, Eric Nader, you align with the Lodic Path. Oh yeah, Black Rock's pretty cool. Shadow Yard is very awesome. They have some interesting, unique ships. Um, what else? Hmm. I really, really want to try the Celestial Mount guys i really want to see their their ships in action eventually fire leans back and brings his hands together in a scholar cr cradle now let's get down to business your first target is francis butler known to possess a ragtag fleet of renegade pirates the primary they ensure is butler's pair of unique lashers which he has put to devastating use raiding supply lines <sighs> also these uh these are unique they will always spawn in all of your playthroughs these are unique targets that you're going to be facing and finding in the world um, they're not randomly generated, for example. You'll always meet Francis Butler, for example. He hands you a modest... He hands you a stock tripod with an estimate of the target's modest fleet, uh, depicting a grim outlook. He gives you a sympathetic look, saying, I know this is a deadly task, Captain, but we leave. You can take this. Fra you can take Francis Butler down if you put your man to it. Also, over here, it's... Um, practically, the colored side is going to show you... How will you currently fare against this target? With our one ship and our freighter, we're going to have a bad time. So, that's it. The reward is 53k, paid on completion, and we will accept that. This is a type of quest that will never go out. You have unlimited amount of time to do this quest. Okay, let's go to Asharu. Hopefully we can sell some stuff there. Uh, the Black Rock Star, I forget, is a missile boat. Yeah, okay. Welcome back, Martin. What's up? Um, not to do a concerned man and walk over to his table. A uh, concerned man is always a transport contract. They will give you a certain amount of units of goods. You decide if you want to do the quest or just... Take the penalty hit, the reputation penalty hit, and keep the goods for yourself and sell them somewhere more profitable. It's your choice. Uh, walk over to the shady person. This is an agent that you will utilize, as I understand, in the faction stage. Practically, think of, think of it as the agents from Total War games, where they go in and sabotage and assassinate and stuff like that. As I understand. Haven't used one yet. Um, I'm going to check out the Concerned Man quest, but not yet. Let's see what they got. Bongos up the ass. Damn, I'd, I'd love to grab some bongos, but I'm kind of low on cash. How much for a bongo? 360? That ain't that expensive. That ain't that bad. Why wow, the sheriff's 18%? Uh, no, 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 no. You know what? I'll take the black market hit just to get some extra money. Okay, and... Anything interesting on the black market? That's interesting on the black market. Your expense for trade contracts pay very well considering the price. Unless you come upon a station in dire need of the items, you should probably just do the mission. Uh, true, Martin. Uh, they do very well, uh, but once you have a big fleet, they you practically outscale the contracts. You don't really find that well-paid contracts. That's it. Uh, sa sabos. I, I, I need those sabos on my ship. So for right now, let's go fleet. Let's go buy. Uh, same ships that we saw before. The kite. 
might be useful as a support ship, but we're doing fine for right now. Famous last words right there, by the way. Okay, I uh, just want that. We need to... Am I using that? Hmm. Trading with pirate stations is also profitable? It is. Uh, problem is, I think I kind of pissed them off with my transponder on. So I'm not sure if I can sneak in with my transponder off to do business with them. Uh, just do black market smuggling. Pays way more. And if you're nodded, they add a more reasonable tax. I can? Okay. Okay, so they're still... Uh, the, I'm not going to go hostile. All right. Uh, do I want the three sabos? I guess they can come in handy as a saving my ass moment. But we're going to be producing more flux. Nah. Nah, nah. I'll, I'll keep going like this. Anything else that I want to try out? Monograms. I just can't for some time when I start shit. Get it. Okay, okay. Could keep the bullpup and just add monograms. Yeah, let's let's just add them. I, and I would like to show you the monograms as well. We'll keep one bullpup for uh, armor shredding and the monograms. You can always undo all of your changes by pressing the undo key. Uh, good. Run sim. Oh, wait, I forgot to add the excess ordinance points. Yeah, we have an extra ordinance point. Let go with venti the vent vent. Run. I think we have too much venting on it, but it should be fine. That should give us some sustained firepower. Okay. Sell the guns and directs the terrorists. It's almost as profitable in the game as in real life. That's great, man. That's great. You're a... Oh, right. We have... Uh... I forgot that we have uh, um, safety overrides. I got to turn safety overrides off so we can take advantage of the 1,000 range on the monograms. Okay, if that's the case, we're going to add flux distributor, hardened subsystems. Actually, no, without the hardened subsystems. Mm, no, I still have to add that something. Uh, yum, yum, yum. Hard subsystems for now. Give us time to utilize the weaponry. Okay, now bring in the lasher. There, deploy. Oh, if, if we could find some lashers, that'd be great. Do you have the mod that adds the station that sells high end ships and weapons that are really good but crazy expensive? Uh, Kalendar? Karindar? Something like that? Yes, I do. What's the difference between hybrid and universal mounts? Now, that's a question that I'd like to know as well. There we go. Now, the good thing about the monogram... Oh! Careful, bruh. Careful. Is that we can maintain a distance from the enemy. And we're slowly suppressing their armor. Eventually, they're going to have—they're gonna be forced to turn off their shields. And we're going to start doing hull damage. Like right now. Hybrid only does two or three, and your reversal does all of them. Okay. Synergy are energy plus missile. Hybrid are missile plus ballistic. Oh, right though. Yeah, I could never get that down. Yeah, the only problem with this weapon is they can't really put in the good dent in. Unless I get get close with my bullpup. So yeah, our killing potential goes way, way down. Nah, I don't care. That's a, that's a desperation. That's a desperation salvo. So you'll slowly, slowly whittle them down. That's why it's a good idea to add the subsystems as well. Um, ballistics and missiles all the way, baby. Uh, I tend to agree... Although a Tritachion Lance is sexy as fuck. If you have the flux to do it, to use it. Nah, we're, we're killing enemies too slow. Undo that shit. We're gonna keep on this setup. Yep, yeah, I'm ending it right now. I lost the track of time. I was having fun. 
Okay, uh, that is gonna be it for today. We're gonna save and exit and we'll uh, check out that transport contract next time. So, um, hope you enjoyed. If you guys like what I do, hit that follow button. It really helps me out, makes it really grow, makes everything more awesome. If you wanna further support me, also subscribe. If you're on YouTube, I have multiple guys and playthroughs that you guys can check out. Uh, most of, I think all of my guys are from Mountain Blade, but I do plan on making a guide for Star Sector eventually as well. And uh, that's it. Wish you boys and girls a wonderful day. Bye-bye.